Right. It is 7 p.m. on June 28th, 2023. And by all accounts, uh, here in person is myself, the chair, Joshua Warnig, Doug Levine, Thomas White. Uh, online, it looks like we have Adam Hirsch, as well as Kevin Fitzpatrick. We certainly have that forum. Um, I do know Amy Puzzle, our town council's on. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, and let me see, it being seven o'clock, I will open the meeting. In one second, I filibuster and pull up the. And brown the green, 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 green. All right, I'm going to read the agenda for the June 28th, 2023 agenda. One may watch or participate remotely with the meeting link that can be found at, and the agenda does provide a URL. I will not read. <clears throat> Pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted in person and by remote means in accordance with applicable law. This meeting may be recorded, which will be made available to the public on WACAN as soon after the meeting as it When required by law or allowed by the chair, persons wishing to provide public comment or otherwise participate in the meeting may do so by in-person attendance, if allowed, or by accessing the meeting remotely as noted above. We request public comment be limited to two minutes per person. Everyone in attendance should be aware that face masks are now optional for town buildings according to the new face covering guidance dated February 24th, 2022. And the agenda provides a URL, which I will not read. <clears throat> uh, at this time, um, and before we get into public comment, I would just like to state, because I think we probably have a, a fairly good number of people either watching this live or uh, uh, watching this back on Waycam. Um, we are actively recruiting for uh, the zoning board. We need two, two new members. We have uh, uh, two individuals who are going to be stepping down and stepping away from the board. So I would, uh, I would encourage any and all who might be interested in, uh, in, in seeking to, to join our honorable board um, to, to do so and, and contact the, uh, the board of selectmen um, with letters of interest. And with that, um, welcome, Sean. Good to see you. And, I note online also uh, Aida and uh, Jim has joined us during uh, reading the preamble here. So we're going to open up this up for public comment. And this public comment is not related to the St. Anne's uh, hearing for which tonight's related to, but for any other public comment that we might have. Um, so at this time, I will accept public comment. Anybody have public comment related to this subject hearing? Hearing none. Um, in person, I'm looking on the attendee list. I don't see anything from the attendees either. So we will move back to the second piece, uh, which is review and accept meeting minutes of May 25th, 2023, May 30th, 2023, June 1st, 2023, June 8th, 2023. And I believe before the board, uh, I believe we only have one set of those meeting minutes that are available and ready. Um, this quick succession of meetings has made it difficult for administrative support to, to keep up there. Um, understanding that we have limited uh, support and we've asked the town to allocate further resources to us um, such that we could keep up with some of these administrative items. Um, that would be wonderful. So I think we only have the May 25th, 2023 meeting minutes before us. Um, has everybody on the board, and I'm just going to have everyone just confirm verbally, um, whether you had a chance to review those meeting minutes? Yes. 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 Okay. And have we not heard uh, from Jim? Have you had a chance to review the meeting minutes of May 25th? Uh, I'm checking. I apologize, Joshua. I don't uh, remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they, they just came out in the last day or so. Okay, um, then I have not. Okay. And, and Sean, have you been had a chance? To I, have, was, I was not at the meeting that day. Okay, good enough. All right, thank you. Um, all right, uh, anybody have uh, questions, comments, discussion surrounding the meeting minutes? I move approval of the May 25th, 2023 CBA meeting minutes. Second. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Uh, Mr. Hirsch, always rely on you. Uh, I appreciate that. We'll take it by <coughs> roll call vote, understanding um, that um, Mr. Brumbeck and Mr. Sarian will not vote on this since they have not reviewed uh, uh, the minutes. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Aye. Ms. Janice? Aye. Mr. Hirsch? Aye. Mr. Levine? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Myself, the Chair, Trish Warning, aye. Uh, that passes. Um, 
we have approved uh, the May 25th, 2023 meetings. And again, I asked the town to allocate further administrative resources so we can catch up here and, uh, and, and be supported. <clears throat> With that, uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which are topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting, if any. Uh, I have no such items that are not reasonably anticipated. Um, so it being 7.05, uh, we will move on to the 7.05 p.m. continued application by the Planning Office of Urban Affairs for a comprehensive permit uh, filed pursuant to General Law Chapter 40B for 60 rental units, 100% of which shall be deed restricted as affordable. This property is located at 124 Kikichwit Road, which is in the R40 zoning district, case number 23-09, continued from uh May 25th, 2023, May 30th, 2023, June 1st, 2023, June 8th, 2023, June 15th, 2023. Um, and I think while we open this uh, this hearing, I think uh, I'd like to get a brief update from the applicant on where we stand. Uh, I know recent new plans have been submitted and then I understand that uh, you have um, your civil engineer in attendance, um, but only for the first half an hour. So perhaps we we will entertain any conversation relative to that, um, any update we need from from that individual, and then we can then move on from there. That sounds good. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Well, now I can stop talking, and I'm going to go grab a drink of water while you can give us a uh, a brief update. Great. Um, uh, Shanna Corman Houston, Director of Real Estate Planning Office of Urban Affairs. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, as the chair alluded to, we have this evening for you some revisions to our permit application that were submitted to the board um, and the town uh, earlier this week. Uh, we believe that they are reflective of all comments received to date. Uh, they are, my understanding is currently under review by the peer reviewer um, who, who can speak to when a report will be ready um, in his own right. Um, and um, yep, so, so that is, that's where things stand. So this evening, we'd like to we'd like to present that to you, if you time permitting and your interest um, permitting, will we can also present uh, our proposed waiver list to you. Um, it's available in writing as well, of course. So um, so if you would prefer to simply read it, that's fine as well. Uh, so that's where we are and. Um, I guess I'll hand it over to our civil engineer, Steve Garvin. Um, before we get there, um, just as far as the new submissions, <laughs> what are included? Are these new plans? Uh, okay. I mean, what what exactly is included in there? Revisions to the plans, or do we have yep. other written documents that, yep. that are part of the process? Uh, revisions to the plans, a stormwater report, a photometric study, and am I missing anything? And an updated landscape plan. Updated landscape. Okay. So, uh, plans, a stormwater report, and photometric study. That's correct. Okay. Gotcha. And those have all been submitted electronically, no paper copies. That's correct. Okay. okay. Um, I have not had a chance to access those, but uh, I will be looking at those, but we're looking forward to hearing from our peer reviewer. Just one point of clarification. So, there are a lot of things flying around, I'm sorry, Sean Reardon, Tetra Tech, the ZBA's um, technical review consultant. So a lot of submittals flying around. I received a, an email late last night that had a pretty comprehensive set of information. I don't recall seeing a photometric plan in there. So was that submitted after or? Um, thank you for, thank you for the reminder. The photometric plan was not submitted. Uh, it was received this morning. It will be, it was either submitted about half an hour ago or will be um, later this evening. Thank Great. you for that reminder. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. McCurry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, happy to hear from your civil engineer. All right, uh, Mr. Garvin. Mr. Garvin, welcome. Good evening. Yes, thank you. Uh, Steve Garvin from Sinios Consultants, professional engineer and want to go through the minor changes that we have. Don't mind my dog. 
um, we are <clears throat> have made minor changes from a site plan perspective. We responded to some technical questions and comments from the peer reviewer. Uh, the main thing we've done is on the layout plan um, and if you can see along the eastern edge behind the building, we've added a two foot grass strip um, to give a little more space. And that wall's moved a little bit into the 30 foot uh, buffer. Um, the other item really that has changed, if you go to the next sheet, is that there's been a shift of making sure that the entirety of the septic system is out of the 100 foot buffer zone. Otherwise, um, it's really been uh, no substantial changes, material changes from what's been reviewed by this board previously. Wonderful. Any you know, other updates or was that it? That is it. Otherwise, it's been technical information to your peer reviewer. Really, there's nothing else that's unchanged on this site. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> any any questions or, or comments uh, from the board or, or from the peer reviewer at this time? No questions. <clears throat> no questions. I think both these changes are positive uh, to the, the layout that we've got. Good, good. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, Ian, at, at, at this time, um, does it make sense to, to jump into the waivers? You know, as far as... Uh, talking about those, or do should we be? So, Ms. I'm sorry. There, yes. there are actually changes to a few other sections of the plan, so we're okay. happy to do it. Yeah, so how about we yeah. just highlight those changes, sections. and um, that would be yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Okay, great, Mr. Garvin. Thank you. Um. So, so landscape, uh, our landscape architect, Rebecca Bashand, our BLA. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Shana. Um, for the record, Hello. Rebecca Bashand. Thank you, our BLA design. Um, the major changes to the landscape plan are really just the addition of the lighting. I know we reviewed um, the style and the look of the lighting. Um, if you look very closely at this rendering, you can see some little yellow dots just to represent um, and highlight a little bit the tiny little pin dots of light fixtures that would be um, shown on the site plan. So we have some double luminaires and single luminaires, which is just a single as a post with the light on top, and the double is a post in the middle with little arms that hold the lights. And then four wall fixtures. If you can see my mouse, that one at each of the outside doors, oh, sorry, five, one at the door to the courtyard, one at the patio door, and just one to the side of the canopy, just to give a little bit more lighting along the back sides of those sidewalks. And then the rest are pole mounted in the um, parking area. We did add they're called house side shields, but in this case, they're actually wetland side shields just to not spill any light down into the resource areas. Um, wouldn't want to keep our amphibians up late at night. And then um, you can see along the north property line, we've added 14 green giant arborvitae in what we're calling the phase one landscape plan. Um, and then behind that, you'll see a little yellow line that's uh, proposed solid board fence that would sit behind the plantings and that would run from the existing drainage easement to um, overlap with the existing fence on the neighbor's property. So it would give a little bit more buffer to Windy Hill Lane residents that would, we think, be able to sit kind of along the existing tree line um, yep. underneath the canopy. And then those new trees are proposed in between the existing trees to remain. Um, where you see the change from kind of a muted light green to a brighter light green is the transition from the existing vegetation line that would remain. There's a lot of um, lower growth and vegetation coming up. And then the brighter green is the lawn areas. Um, and then that's about it. Everything Ms. else Bichon, is pretty. You referenced, a, you, you referenced uh, phase one, <laughs> um, which indicates the phase two, perhaps. Uh, can you just remind yes. me? So phase one would be these 14 arborvitae at the um, Windy Hill Lane side that there was some discussion about possibly installing things before construction is complete, where 
um, landscaping would usually at, go in at the end so that it's not disrupted by pavement or, you know, other excavations and things. So where Hi, these John. are out of the way of the majority of all the construction, really, um, they could be installed at the beginning and get a little bit more time to grow. Um, and then the rest of the plantings would go in toward the end of construction. And that would be phase two? Yes. And does this plan show the phase two plantings as well, or has that not been determined? Yes. Or? So phase one is just the plantings along the property line, and all gotcha. of the darker plantings are phase two. Yep. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions, comments from the board, the rest of landscaping? Um, yes. Ms. Chance. Hi, thank you. So I'm looking at, you know, on my on my screen. So I see the uh, 14, I, I just counted them, green dots along the northern dark line, which I think is your, the property line, right? Yes. And thank you. And how tall will those ar arborvitaes be? I should have. I, you may have, I may have missed it. No, I probably didn't say. I want to double check so I don't misstate what thank size you. we picked on my landscape plan. Um, so we will be including, if it didn't go out already, a more detailed list um, instead of just the plant names. It actually has the sizes and quantities. So for phase one, I have 14, 10 to 12 foot height, bald and burlap, green giant, arbor um, okay. So those actually were listed as in the ground at the local nurseries. So they haven't actually been, been dug yet. And at the time of um, construction, we'd obviously go, you know, source out all the local nurseries and see what they have available. Okay. Um, yeah. For reference, we would typically plant like a five to six foot evergreen for screening material. Okay. That was, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> um, and then you mentioned that there is a fence, a, a solid board fence somewhere. Yes. So, um, again, can you see my little mouse? Behi we were thinking um, behind the arbor variety. When we met with the neighbors in the field, there's an existing solid fence that kind of comes from along the road and then wraps the corner to um, right after these three bright green dots or so. First, the first and bright green dots. The first the three line. on the left, yes, okay. from the street. So where that fence ends, we thought we could add another fence. Um, and we thought it was better placed behind so that they're not just the neighbors aren't just looking at a fence. They could look right. at the arbor radies and, you know, do additional plantings on their property if they wanted to screen that. They actually have a re pretty robust um, selection of really beautiful and unusual plants. So okay. you know, we didn't want to disturb those by trying to stick fence posts under them or near them. So okay. behind the arbor variety, we'd have an additional fence that kind of picks up that same line of the existing fence and runs out to the, um, there's a drainage easement that comes from their property over. Um, so we wouldn't be able to install a fence in that. So can you tell me what the height is and what the color is? Um, I just, we didn't pick a color. It would be okay. a six foot solid board. Um, okay. So kind of the ones that you can't see through. So it's six yep. foot height. Um, probably flat top and right. um, opaque. And then we could either leave it natural. I think the existing one is just natural, um, which would be very low maintenance for everyone. But, um, you know, as well, we proceed, if it yeah. wants to match the building or something, you know, I don't want it to like jump out and right, be like this right. bright white fence in the woods. So right. uh, I'd be inclined to leave it natural and just let it weather to gray over time. But um, can certainly be discussed. Well, I, you know, input from the neighbors would, would be right. helpful. Um, but that's that's very helpful. Thank you. And that's going to run from basically the street side um, to the east. Yes. So parallel to the property line, right. from where the existing fence ends over to okay. the drainage easement. Okay. And I on the map that I see, uh, I don't see a drainage easement marked as such i see a dotted red line which is the wetlands delineation right right and yep I and i apologize the... it is not showing up on this rendering um but in the plans that 
it does come up because it comes from the existing conditions plan. So mm -hmm. it must just be a layer I lost somewhere along the way. Yeah, if, if I, if I may, um, uh -huh. what I'm seeing on the screen here, I see a hashed yellow line that is just to the um, the south of the Arbor Vitae that are being um, suggested as phase one plantings. And okay. the fence picks up after the first three Arbor Vitae coming in from the street and then okay. um, uh, terminates just uh, after the last of the Arbor Vitae that's uh, suggested to be installed for phase one. Did I get that right, Ms. Bashan? Okay. That is very good. Thank you, Mr. Warning. Um, so that, yes. that looks like it's just about where the asphalt of the um, parking lot would end. Is that right? Just uh, behind the building. Yeah. Okay. So it continues just a little bit past the asphalt and the wall that are over there. It's just over 200 feet long. So um, provide some decent screening. Okay. Those are my questions, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Janice. Uh, any other questions, comments? I think this may be a natural uh, point to maybe um, see if there's any uh, public comment. Um, Ms. Janice, I think you, you raised a good point, or maybe if there's any um, any feedback from, from neighbors as relative to uh, the fence and the fence coloring. I know that's, um, that's being suggested here, or any feedback to really, I uh, guess, anything that's been discussed so far. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, if I could just a point of clarification. Was this plan that we're seeing submitted, or is this a new piece of information? It was submitted. This, this graphic? Uh, no. Okay. okay. This, the, the, the black and white version of this was submitted. Okay. So, so, so I'm just, I just want to, because for me, it's real important that the record is clear. Yeah. I typically only review materials that are provided to the board. So if this can get provided, um, because the plan I saw is black and white landscape plan, and it didn't, I don't know if it was an error, but it didn't have any of the trees, none of the trees were labeled. Okay. So it had a plant list and it had all the the, the schedule, the, the trees um, dispersed to the site, but none of them had plant like species labels on them. So I, I don't know if I, we would typically see the, the symbol and the label for what that tree was. Is, um, is that something that we could uh, we could obtain? So on Monday, I think a plan set went out that it does not have the each tree labeled because I typically do that at construction, but the list is there with the quantities and the sizes. So there's no way to determine what trees are planned to go where? I mean, I can get you that. I just typically do it at construction. I think it might be helpful just for... Uh for clarity sake sure. at this, this juncture, if, it, if you were able to share um, the, the full color as well as uh, uh, a labeled um, a labeled plan, I think that would be excellent. Yeah, I, I just don't know how you tell whether a particular tree is appropriate there or whether the numbers are correct. So we would typically check the plan against the schedule of, yep. of trees to sure. make sure that they match up. Otherwise, sure, you could I can provide that. Symbols on there that aren't listed in the plant schedule. So, wonderful. Yes, we would request that. Thank you. I'll prepare that. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> yes. Just your name and address for the record. Uh, Arbor Rutledge, one Wendy Lane. Fourteen oh. Arbor Vitae is not enough. It, we would like a very thick edge. Not, not something. You know, sporadic, sporadic or it have to be a, a thick edge, please. So what's not showing up on this rendering, but can be seen on the black and white plan is the root zone of the existing trees that will remain. And we don't want to plant new trees in those root zones because it'll cause the existing trees to go into decline. So we've put these at spacing so that they'll touch as they grow, when they get to the mature size, they're actually only um, like 10 feet apart or 12 feet apart now. So, you know, they'll be fairly close when they're growing. And then when they hit the mature size, they'll really be touching and they're avoiding the existing tree root balls. So you're going to have all of these existing trees, many of which are evergreen um, in between them. 
What, what, Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, you got further comment? Yes. What is the mature size? I mean, how many years it takes to get to a mature size, Arbor Valley Green Giant? Ms. Pichon, did you hear that? Or I the question, did. The question was relative to how long will it take to get to maturity and what size would we expect them to be? I think that given their neighborhood, they're probably the experts in this more than I. Um, but let me check a resource here. Um, you know, if they're going in at 10 to 12 feet high, they're going to be fairly wide. So typical spacing is about six feet. We have them placed a little bit further than that right now, just because it was feeling crowded with the existing trees in there. Uh, but this is really, it's not sporadic. They're very consistent, lined up on center at 12 feet so that they will be touching in, you know, 10, 15 years. 15 years, that's not, that's not satisfactory. 10, well, appreciate the comment. Um, do you have further comments yes, not related one, to that? One more, uh, six foot fence is not, it's too low. So it should be at least an eight or nine, 10 foot fence, please. Okay. Um, we'll take that uh, as, a, as a comment. I'm not sure if there's any response to that uh, from the applicant or, you know, um, but certainly our purviewers heard that, we've heard that. Um, and if the applicant wants to respond to that. I'm taking that. Okay. <laughs> and I think one note would just be that typically over six feet becomes a structure. So we might run into setback issues if we were. I, mean, I was going to mention back. the same thing. That over six feet, a fence becomes a structure that you have to engineer. A 10 foot fence is, a, is an engineered structure that will require concrete foundations. You know, I don't think the idea of excavating out in that tree area for something like that would be that. It wouldn't be what I would suggest. But again, I, I think we have, to, we have to take the public's comment and you know, have the applicant do the research on that. Mr. Bill, I see one. Yes, that is correct. It would be a structure, and you actually have, have to account for the fall zone too, and also wind as well. Thank you. All right. So it sounds like there's some some complexities that need to be thought about there. Um, okay. Wonderful. Uh, other comments as it relates to the revisions to the landscape, or I guess the the, the civil engineering. Or just one quick thing, Mr. Chair. I, the landscape architect was a little conservative on her numbers. I, I, if it's the Green Giant Arborvitae and they're going in at ten to twelve feet, those are those are relatively mature trees. Those are those are big trees. Um, I would expect in, in no more than five to eight years, they'll be sixteen feet tall, seventeen feet tall. So, um, and I don't know how much bigger they get above that because they sort of max out at eighteen, twenty feet. So, um, I would expect in five, six years. You'll, they'll they'll be fully mature. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take a comment from in the back here. I'm just going to. It's just an answer. your name and address. Gloria Valari, 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 Three Winthrop Road. Thank you. Um, Welcome. The uh, <laughs> uh, the Green Giant Arborvitae can grow 50 to 60 feet tall. That's its mature size, and it's fast growing. It can grow. Uh, average growth is three feet a year. Thank you. All right, and Ms. Rutledge, I, I think never get to plant them that big. <laughs> Sorry. We'll just keep it brief here. Oh, sure. um, we thanks for staking the and putting up the balloons, but they're the balloons are not enough, and nor are the stakes. They have to be. We, we have to go over that again. I couldn't find all the stakes for the uh, <clears throat> landscaping plant or for the building plants. And okay. the balloons are not, it's, it's just not sufficient. They're not visible. Um, okay. I, I've been by myself. I've seen the balloons, um, you know, when they were, were put up after the site visit. Um, uh, they were visible to me. But uh, noted, um, I don't know if there's a response from, from the applicant, whether you want to take that on or discuss that. that Mr. Phil Crane, project manager with the planning office. Um, I was out, when I was out there with the neighbors, uh, they were, we were trying to, uh, figure, figure, uh, find which balloon was, which corner of the building. Um, 
and they they expressed some concern that that it, you know was either uh, in the wrong spot or not. And so I went to the survey team and confirmed that they were in the correct locations while we were out there. Okay, and, and during that site visit, uh, did you guys visit all the different stakes for the building outline at uh, that time? Or yes, yes. The, the survey team and myself were out in the woods to, to raise the balloons, and I was there with the neighbors. We were on the Rutledge's uh, property to, to view the balloons because that was the easiest way. And it's uh, quite the woods in there are quite thick, so it's, it's you know I wouldn't recommend everyone going in there. But um, but all the balloons that we uh, were, were raised in the corners of the building are. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Mr. Chair? Mr. Yes. Chair? Was that me, Ms. Chairs? Yes. Um, you're mentioning a site visit. When was the site visit? When was that site visit? We, we didn't get notice as a board for the site visit. And so that's one thank thing I was going to address today. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. We, we had discussed I, it. Um, you know, yeah. it had come up at one of the early hearings. I think it was Genesis, if I remember correctly. And, yeah. and I had suggested because, you know, the balloons have been a very long conversation. Um, of right. which I have tired. Um, yeah. but, uh, but what I'll say is we discussed that, making sure that we offered a site visit, certainly for the neighbors, but the board did want to, to you know, and maybe we should renew that request, you know, to have a, a yeah. site visit for, for the board um, if the board so desires. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I would. Yeah, so, and I don't know, um, you know, the scheduling of that, but to, you know, to coordinate with, with us and you know, with with the board, the, so such that we get notice and have the opportunity to attend, if we so choose, would be would be wonderful. Um, and maybe um, that would be another yet another opportunity to revisit the stakes. Um, you know, at that time. Um, but I think this process, and I'm I'm speaking to the abutters who who have repeatedly raised this as a concern. I, I think you've gotten some pretty good due process here. On, uh, on on these site visits, um, but maybe this is an opportunity just to go, you know, make sure that it's clear and um, and and fully realized, you know, where where this information is. But uh, but I'm not really interested in hearing much more about uh, uh, site visits and ballooning and staking um, beyond this. And I would suggest to the applicant if we could get a site visit that satisfies um, <coughs> board members, you know, that want to attend, but also we could invite the neighbors. To once again ensure that uh, the information is clear, but I want this to be the end of that conversation because we're moving on to other conversations. Is that, am I clear? What are they running? Okay. Um, and I think that's that's more than fair um, in in my view. All right. <sighs> Wonderful. Any further comments? Uh, yes, sir. David Shamoy and to Windy Hill Lane. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, first. Mr. Chair, thank you very much for your comment about the ballooning. I think it would be important for the board um, if you have the opportunity to see the significance and the height of the structure and its and its proximity to Windy Hill Lane. So thank you for, for that. Um, I just wanted to say that if, the, if you approve this project, in your decision, if you could be specific as to the landscaping plan, and thank you for the peer review comment, we think that that's very important, especially as it relates to the peer, uh, phase two additional landscaping, because the worst thing that could happen would be for the project to, to be constructed, the contractor goes away, and then there is really no significant uh, phase two plantings that are done. And so... That that plan should be detailed, and thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate those comments. May, may I add in response to that? Just the yes, phase Sean. one. So phase two, to me, is the regular phase of construction. Those plantings are part of the landscape set and always have been. That is our base bid starting point for construction documents. Phase one is really a supplement to that. Uh, to benefit the neighbors that would come before the majority of construction starts. So rather than going in and clearing and grubbing that portion of the site that, the, you know, as one might do for, you know, in a clear cutting type of scenario, this will only be selectively cleared to the limit of work, which is that that change from the bright green to the, the muted green. And then those 14 upper body would go in prior to the rest of the, what is phase two is really just the landscaping 
it wouldn't be something that would be contingent upon like future. We, we appreciate that clarification and, and, and understand that uh, clarification. So I appreciate that. Um, I do think that many of the comments that, uh, uh, that were just raised by, uh, by one of the abutters, I think will be more than adequately addressed if, uh, if we respond uh, to the request that came, came through um, Mr. Reardon, our peer reviewer, um, to which you've already agreed. So I think that probably will satisfy, you know, um, um, what, what the abutter is looking for. So I appreciate that and your willingness to provide that. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, let me see here. So you've been entertaining um, comments uh, in the room. Uh, we do have a hand up uh, from an Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth, uh, can you state your uh, name and address for the record? And welcome. Yes. Um, can you hear me? I can. Okay. I'm Elizabeth Russell Skian, 101 Pelham Island Road. Um, I found the balloon very easy to see. I drove over there the day it was flying. I think the reason the neighbors can't see it is because it's lower than the tree line. Um, from their property, it's impossible to see. You had to get drive in there, get out of your car and walk around to see it. Also, I drove down Windy Hill Lane and I think this is a great landscape plan, although you know, I wouldn't do the fence because you don't need it, but if you want it, go for it. Um, but if you look in their backyards, their trees are so thick right up to their backyard that you can't even see through where you're talking about the proposed plan for planting. So I, I don't see how this is ever going to get passed if we keep going back to balloons and details about landscaping when the truth of the matter is the reason they can't see it is because there's already so many plantings there. And Ms. Skian, if I, if I may, I thought we were beyond the balloons and I had asked to be beyond the balloons. I think you're- No, no, I'm talking about the- um, I'm talking so I, about the plant. I, I'm talking about the height of the trees. I, I appreciate your comment. Thank you very much. The um, length. I think I think we're good here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, your thank you. All right. All right. Does anybody have anything beyond balloons to talk about? I have Mr. Reardon. One question, not, not related to landscape or balloons. <laughs> so so there was a plant similar that shows the lease line. Okay. And the rectory is within the lease parcel. So it was just surprising to me that that would, I didn't quite understand, at least to me would dif differentiate between the project and the balance of the site. So I was hoping that the lease line would sort of clarify which parking was for the church and which parking was for the project, but it showed the lease line that included the rectory, included the parking in front of the rectory. So I was just looking for a bit of an explanation on that. Yes. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, the access to the site uh, and the shared septic system are located such that uh, the rectory is captured and there would need to be a donut. Um, the rectory would need to be essentially a donut. Um, where uh, there will be easements back or use easements back to um, so so that so that the the uh, Father Dave, um, the parish will continue having sole use and enjoyment of the rectory, um, but uh, but you are correct; it is captured within. Um, why does it have to be in the lease parcel? Why, why why can't the lease go around the parking in the building that's the project and yeah. not? So so the parking um, the. Uh, Actually, I would have to pull the septic plan back Do up. Do we have but, a copy of the, the, but the when lease the lease, plan? When the lease line was drawn, the septic was directly underneath the parking lot. The pair, um, mm -hmm. And I believe at least some of it still is. Um, access, the access road um, goes... Uh, so, so shared access to the site is also... Um, also sort of cuts in that parking lot. So uh, it would certainly be possible to cut out, to carve out little pieces. This is this is what was negotiated with the archdiocese. Um, so. So will the project, and, and correct me if I'm speaking out of turn, but will the project 
be responsible for maintenance of everything within the lease parcel. So all the roadways, all the septic system, all the infiltration system. So, uh, so the details will be, the, the details are going to need to be negotiated with the archdiocese. Um, uh, my, let's see. So my assumption, my guess, my assumption is that the project will be, will be responsible for the actual action, um, for coordinating and taking action. And it is possible that, um, that there may be some conversation with the parish about, um, about shared cost of um, septic, although that um, that has not been contemplated to date. <laughs> but, but the project will be responsible for, uh, for all of that work. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Ms. Quizzle. I, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, of course. Um, so I, I'm i very confused about the fact that the rectory and the church are within the leased area. Not the not, not, just, just the rectory building. The, the, the same, just the rectory building. This so um, could we put up the lease line? Yeah, thank you. And I think we're, uh, the applicant is pulling up and going to be sharing um, the, the the plot plan here is okay. So, <laughs> um, is there any way to zoom in a little bit um, to specifically to that corner that has the rectory and the access drive? Um, I see. So what you see, so the challenge that we face is essentially that. There's a shared access drive um, that, ser that serves the church and will serve um, the, the new uh, apartment building. And that access drive is located just to the north of the lease line, just inside the lease line. Um, uh, and of course, the rectory is to the north of that. Um, we contemplated at various different times doing a little carve out, um, bumping the rectory out. It was, uh, it was considered to be more elegant, um, or, or more, um, it, the preference was not to carve the rectory out, um, the preference was to have a fully contiguous um, and, and clean lease area. Um, that, that, that is what was negotiated with the archdiocese. Is, this is the parcel that was made available. It is, if, I, if I may, I mean, it, what's the practical meaning of this? And what's, you know, what's the, I guess, what's the implications here? Because, you know, we could do it, they, they could do it this way, or they could have carved it out completely and just had an easement provided for that access. You know, that's a different way you could have done it through through some sort of easement uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. But what's a practical result for one way or the other? Clarifying divisions of responsibility. So they and have- And also site control. Site control, okay. Yep, so- yep. Wonderful. Yep, so, okay. so- Further questions or comments from uh, either Anybody <laughs> relative to that nope. issue? Okay. Understood. Okay. Um, wonderful. Uh, further public comment as it relates to the matters that we've heard or further uh, revisions to the plans that we need to hear about? Um, uh, we've got our architect here. Um, there was a, there was one small revision to the architecturals. Um, Jay Szymanski from TAT. Welcome, Jay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So again, my name is Jay Szymanski. Uh, I'm a principal with the architectural team. We are the architects for the project. Um, we did get one minor comment about uh, an exposed foundation wall to the, um, I guess it's the, the northwest corner of the building that you can see here. So this is the elevation from the street. And to the left side of this image, where the uh, the grade, the existing grade drops off, 
it was a portion of the building that had um, a fair amount of exposed foundation wall that we were cladding in stone. Sorry, if you go back to the previous. Yep. Um, so what we did in response to that was we actually brought the siding down a bit so that you can see how at the end of the building, the left end of the building, um, the, the cladding actually steps down to follow the grade uh, to reduce the amount of exposed foundation wall. And then we're also showing some uh, kind of uh, mounding or berming of uh, landscaping that could happen directly against that foundation wall to, to soften that edge a bit. And then if you go to the next slide. So this is now the north elevation. So where this wraps around the corner of the building, we also had some exposed foundation wall there. Um, so again, we, we brought some of the cladding down to step along with the grading to reduce the amount of exposed uh, stone wall there. So that's what you're seeing here. And then those were the only um, architectural changes. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any comments, questions uh, from the board uh, relative to any architectural changes? No, it's, it's what it's what was discussed at the, at the last meeting. I think it makes a positive change. Good. Um, any other notable changes? Uh, yes, that well, so not a change, but we were uh, it, it was requested that we explore a crosswalk um, and and so we have not made a plan change, but um, but we'd like to share with you um, our thinking on the crosswalk. Um, Mr. Chair, before we can I ask yes, a question about the last I'm sorry. No, please is, is that Jay, is that volume still filled or is that? Building volume being be used. That is unexcavated space, so it's filled. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So, last at our last meeting, we uh, that we left saying uh, Bill Crane, uh, real real estate uh, project manager with planning office. Thanks. Um, so our last our, our last hearing, we you know we heard that we, we, there was uh, there was some interest in possibly providing a crosswalk at the site. So we uh, had our traffic engineer take a look at the site and um, using his best judgment, what would what would be the the, the, you know, the best spot for a crosswalk? Um, it, it, he uh, mentioned that you know you you really want like a, a street you know a crosswalk to go from like one street to across to another street there. So uh, his solution was to uh, propose you know, a crosswalk that would be uh, you know, go from the site to uh, Greenway and connect to that crosswalk on the uh, southbound side of the Chichewit Road. Um, they reckon, he also recommended that if there was a crosswalk there, it would be the uh, you know the rectangular rapid flashing beacons for someone to press, and then the lights would come up. Um, and that's what's down there, circled in red with the two lines. Uh, last, the, after we uh, we met with the uh, police chief um, on last Thursday to to discuss this proposed uh, crosswalk, he had concerns. Um, Namely, that it's not located you know, at an intersection with, with and um, he's concerned about the speed of the vehicles and that the crosswalk is, you know, kind of just in the middle of the road there. Um, and then also uh, expressed, you know, concern about the lack of a sidewalk on the uh, northbound side of the Citrus Road and, the, and, you know, expressed some doubt about uh, being able to create a uh, accessible sidewalk. So if someone was in a wheelchair, they, they wouldn't be able to, you know, get them. Uh, on the sidewalk without getting into some of the rock. Um, so we just wanted to, to update the board uh, about uh, progress of uh, looking into the sidewalk and crosswalk, excuse me. Thank you. All right, any questions, concerns? Um, Mr. Chair? Ms. Jones. Hi, uh, thank you. So there is, I really appreciate that that was looked into. Um, I was one of the people who had requested that be considered. Sure. Down by Loker School on Route 30 is a flashing light like that. And um, the street that goes into Damon Farms does not, is not perpendicular, is not flow directly into Loker Street. So there is a little bit of a jog there. Um, I think what the police chief is, is the police chief concerned that there is no 
similar street, like at an easy uh, diagonal across from Greenway? Is that what, when, when he mentions that there is no street going through because there is the driveway, which is not a street, but um, it seems to me it's somewhat similar to what's down by, um, by Loker where Loker hits Route 30 and then it um, goes into Damon Farms. I, uh, if I may, I believe that uh, the police chief was not expressing that it was um, a condition that, you know, one wouldn't, one never saw, um, mm -hmm. that, that never existed anywhere, but both uh -huh. he and the traffic engineer um, were of the opinion that crosswalks were safer when um, when they were at a true corner. Okay, because there was also the crosswalk that is um, just south of Five Paths, where um, if you're going north on 27, before you come to the intersection at Five Paths, um, I think that's what it's called, where Old Connecticut Path crosses um, Route 27, there is a crosswalk and um, that, now, now I was about to say, and there's a light there as well, um, but there was some modification made to that location because of, there had been an accident there and a child had been hit. Um, so they were looking at modifying that and did improve it, which has helped with people wanting to cross and get, you know, from the, east side of 27 to the west side of 27 and then crossing further. Um, so I guess I'm just musing, musing right now. I think, I, I think it would be helpful to have a crosswalk period because then people would be more encouraged to walk. There is that bit of a, um, that there is that bit of the sidewalk on the east side that people use. It's not a concrete sidewalk, it's an asphalt one. And it would encourage recreation. It would encourage people um, going into the greenways and into the, the areas back there, but also north to uh, Route 20. And uh, if, if they're inclined to go that far, go further to the library and, uh, and such. Thank you, Ms. Chenis. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I did have to put in a plug for the library. I, I was uh, going to uh, mention uh, that uh, gratuitous plug uh, for the library, Thank but uh, it's well placed uh, nonetheless. <laughs> and Mr. Levine, I'm going to have to defer to Mr. Rumbach. Uh, he's been waiting patiently here in the audience. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, I'm i not a traffic engineer, and I'm not in the police department. I have lived here for a number of years. I'm familiar with a number of crosswalks that are not right at an intersection. I live on Winthrop Road. There's a crosswalk just south of Winthrop Road. There's no road across the street, but it heads to the uh, the park that's next to the town building. It strikes me at this time that there is a sidewalk on the west side of Cochichewit Road. Uh, it makes sense uh, to me as a layperson to move the yellow uh, configuration up to one of the edges of the driveway or, or somewhere in the driveway to this project, even though it's a little off the driveway at Greenways. And that would allow somebody uh, to use the sidewalk on the Greenway side and cross over to the other side or vice versa without needing a sidewalk. It, it also strikes me that uh, traffic moves quickly on that street, but uh, there is the light and the crosswalk uh, at five corners. And then there's gonna be another crosswalk as you get up to uh, Winthrop Road. So given the number of cars on this street, given the amount of traffic, the number of people crossing, it strikes me that having a crosswalk uh, it might not be the most effective place of a crosswalk in the world, but given 
the reality of this situation, it would be a good idea to have a crosswalk either without a blinking light or otherwise some some sort of a crosswalk where people would be you, to Robert. walk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Uh, quick question um, for uh, anybody, the applicant, Mr. Samansky or others. If um, there are different levels of crosswalk, in my understanding, <clears throat> uh, and somewhat related to the public safety world uh, and driving through Framingham a lot, there is a crosswalk that would have a light across, uh, a <clears throat> signal light that would actually then go flashing red where people by law are required to stop. What is meant by the flashing beacon crosswalk? Uh, as you described. So it would, be, it would be a flashing red light. Uh, and no. I, no, 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 not, no, not no, a, no, a no, strobing no. yellow. Strobing yellow. Be very and if somebody pushes the button, does the light then go red? It, uh, no, no, no. no, no. It it's stro you push the button and it strobes yellow. And, and, uh, and there's, yeah. uh, I believe, um, that, that it is a warning signal to cars um, uh, to pay it that someone is in or desires to be in the crosswalk. Um, it has not a traffic engineer, not a public safety, um, but my official book, my understanding is that it has, uh, it does not have the same legal bearing as a traffic signal does. Um, uh, now, you know, I, I couldn't speak to I, I couldn't speak to what a traffic signal. Nor should we at this point. Right. That's right. That's perhaps uh, just that's, to fill it. All it is is just a fancier crossing. So it's yeah. just more illumination to draw more attention to the. Mm -hmm. to, under no circumstances does it does it require a vehicle to stop. Yeah. Um, with that said, I know this is an update to yes. efforts looking into yes. a crosswalk. Perhaps. Um, Yep. we can get further updates as we yep. continue the process. And, and just in the interest of sense. full disclosure, so in a way of update, we, we had our traffic engineer got all their comments back to me just so everybody feels comfortable. All, all the numbers are accurate. All the analysis was accurate. So all the level of service analysis and things like that you know, was done properly. All the traffic generation was done properly. We both, myself and our traffic engineer, suggest a mo the most practical option for, for dealing with this issue is to extend a sidewalk from the site up the street to connect into the existing sidewalk that's at um, Old Connecticut Path, or that extends down from Old Connecticut Path, and that way people can cross at that intersection. So that's a signalized intersection with a push button control, fully you know, stop controlled intersection that you know, gives the, the, the a pet phase to the people crossing the street. Is there enough room for one? Well, I, I went by there the other day, Looks like there's plenty of room between the edge of travel way and the and the tree line and the the steep slope on the other side to get that there. And the the, the walkway also extends down from I think is it five corners you guys referred to that as um, extends down to the aqueduct. And you know a lot of the walkers are going to probably walk in to get to the aqueduct because that's a a great little walking trail. So um, you know we think that sort of achieves some of the same objectives without sort of having the 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 downside of a mid-block crosswalk. But I, I think this has merits too. We're just in the interest of- has the, yeah, Thank you, Mr. Rader. Yeah. Uh, has the applicant looked into that as a possible solution? I know we hit, we yeah. amused on this at a prior hearing, uh, but is that something that uh, that you considered and, and could look at again, perhaps? Uh, we we have briefly considered. We, <laughs> we have struggled to find an access uh, to find a way to put an accessible cross uh, sidewalk along um, along the east yeah along the east side of the road. Um, uh, we have not devoted a Is that because great of deal of time because of grade. That's right. Uh, we have not devoted a great deal of time to it. Um, uh, I had that same worry about the grade because it, it did seem significant to me. Um, Are we talking? I don't go running off and down that way, but um, but I've done that once or twice. Just, um, just a quick question. Are, are we talking street grade up and down? Or are we talking the lateral grade, the slope on the side of the hill? The side of the hill? I think both. I mean, I think. Well, so there's, there, you're allowed to follow the line of the street and still meet ADA. So if, if the street grade is 6%, you're allowed to, you're allowed to, travel with the street. So 
Um, you know, the street grade shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Um, I, I do think for a minimal <coughs> sidewalk, and we wouldn't expect this to be a six foot sidewalk or a concrete sidewalk, we would think something in the order of four foot wide asphalt sidewalk would be relatively inexpensive and fit quite nicely in the space that's between the edge of the road and the, and the, the, the slope that's out there. And it's really just the frontage of their property almost, just maybe a little bit more. Just an easy. Yeah, Rebecca, it's an easy portion of the road. Sidewalk, this whole thing. There's actually signs from the church parking lot. There's access to trails and getting up to the aqueduct, right? So there's actually a trail that's a little bit overgrown. So I've mentioned to Father Dave, like, can you just get that up to better shape? The issue is there's a fence. If you drive next to me, drive by. So you're right, the pavement goes to the aqueduct. But then there's a fence, right? There's a fence for the aqueduct, and it's really pretty narrow between that and the roadway. So that is not going to fit an ADA or a regular size sidewalk. And that would be an MWRA. Fence. That it would get into all of that stuff. But I would, what I was suggesting was, you know, get that trail back to a good condition because it's beautiful to walk along the aqueduct. So if you wanted to take that trail, you're able-bodied. It's not a, it's not a concrete sidewalk, right? Mm -hmm. But you can walk there and without crossing any traffic, walk in the aqueduct, and it's gorgeous. You can walk forever. So. For able-bodied people who don't want to cross the street, they can get there. For able-bodied people can get to Old Connecticut Path and cross and go over. Um, I think with the crosswalk, it's all of it's a false sense of safety. People blow through crosswalks all the time. And Jim Brownback, we live in the same neighborhood. That crosswalk that's not at the light, you stand there and people will blow right past you. And I've heard even in Newton, like people who do have the blinkers, people blow through them. So it's this false sense of safety. The first person who gets hit in one of those, this is what the police chief said before, is like the first person who gets hit in that crosswalk, they trusted that crosswalk to work. Why in God's green earth did you put a crosswalk there? So it's it's that push and pull of, mm. is it really safe? Is it a false sense of safety? How do you get to a signalized intersection where at least people are truly stopped and can think to look at the traffic signal? So it would be great if the sidewalk would fit. I think you're going to have that pinch point, but I think that you could have that walking path there for able-bodied I mean, if you're going to walk all the way into town, you could walk on a path, right? But, you know, so ultimately you can get to the aqueduct and do a lot of walking and exercise, which if I lived there, that's probably where I would go before going up and over Greenway and down and, you know, a much longer path. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other further comments on crosswalks this time? <clears throat> Hearing none. Um, <clears throat> um, are there further updates we need to discuss at, at this juncture? Um, no, they're not. Wonderful. Um, it, maybe I should uh, ask ask the rest of the board or, or Ms. Boswell at this time. Does it make sense to get start getting into the waivers? Um, does it make sense to do public comments or just take general public comments? Yes. Yeah. I think that's about it. Um, okay. Sure. For the waiver discussion, uh, we would open up for general public uh, comment. Um, you know, let's try to limit comments to uh, new and novel uh, comments. Um, uh, but yeah, we will open this up for public comment. Anybody interested in providing public comment? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, I'm Larry Matter from Three Windy Hill Lane, Wayland. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, I, we've already discussed in prior several prior town meetings and one CBA meeting uh, concerns about um, the um, ecological uh, situation that may be affected by this construction project. And um, as most people here already know, there's a very uh, significant variety of animals and plants uh, that live in the area surrounding uh, the church and the proposed building site and uh, the Three Windy Hill Lane neighborhood. Um, it's really a beautiful area and, and um, most of the animals are friendly. I mean, they're not dangerous animals of any sort um, that I'm aware of at least. Uh, we've already documented in some detail the list of concerns that we have, so I'm not gonna repeat those here. Uh, but I, I would um, hope that the um, developer would um, provide a, assurances to the ZBA that if it, does, if it is allowed, if it's permitted to uh, build this, uh, this housing project, that uh, it will take care to um, not cause environmental damages to various streams, the vernal pond, 
uh, in the area. Uh, the um, larger uh, pond that uh, exists sort of behind the, this property, which is fed by some of the streams that um, we're talking about. So I, I would like to see assurances that if they do damage, that there will be mitigation of that damage, that it won't just be done and they say, oh, sorry. Um, and not that I would expect them to, but there hasn't been anything <clears throat> explicit that I've seen so far that basically assures the town of Wayland um, and its authorities that um, if they do damage, they will mitigate it. Thank you. I so appreciate the comments. Um, and and, and <clears throat> just remind me, <clears throat> um, a lot of those concerns will be dealt with in Conservation Commission, correct? And and, and I just want to I just want to tease that out a little bit for you because um, okay. this process that we're in right now does not wait for the Conservation Commission necessarily. We might not get to the point where the Conservation Commission is weighing in, but certainly, um, you know, uh, if this project were to move forward, it would be subject to a separate process through Conservation Commission, which I think okay that. In, in Ms. Queswell or, or others, you know, you can chime in. Um, I'm, I'm trying to muscle my way through, you know, explaining it and perhaps inartfully. But my understanding is simply that um, I'm not sure that the ZBA can provide, you know, those guardrails as it relates to your concerns. I think that would be much more coming through the Conservation Commission process, which may or may not, um, you know, be keeping pace with our process here at the zoning board, if that makes sense. And if, does, here, Sean, yeah. if you could clarify the conservation yeah. commission after the hearing matter would issue some type of order conditions uh, under state law. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. There, there's, there's three, let's call them guardrails <clears throat> for, for, for the town, even after this process. So, so those three guardrails are the conservation commission and their responsibility to implement the wetlands protection act and the wetlands regulations in Massachusetts. That is to the chair's, point the bulk of their responsibility is protection of the environment and protection of local resources then you also have the board of health who under the state regulations for wastewater disposal need to review their septic design and that needs to that has environmental related um, standards that you have to comply with and then third there's because this site's bigger than an acre it'll disturb more than an acre of land it's going to be required to have what's called the national pollutant discharge elimination system permit an NIPTES permit which is a federal permit that's signed onto by the state that sets specific guidelines for how they have to develop a, a plan called a stormwater pollution prevention plan to protect resource areas from being damaged by construction activity and being damaged by other activity related to construction. So um, you know, there's three pretty substantial guardrails, all of which require a heavy level of documentation. Two are local, Board of Health and, and Conservation. Um, and then if conservation doesn't, if the people, the, the neighborhood or, or the applicant is aggrieved by the conservation's decision, they can appeal that to DEP. So you know, there is a robust review process. Which and, agency uh, issues and if these permit. Um, so that that's the um, EPA, US EPA. Um, it's a general permit, so they don't issue a permit. What they do is it's it's a permit that exists for coverage of particular um, projects. So pro construction projects that will disturb <laughs> more than an acre. Um, so it, it, it's a 120 page permit that basically you have to you sign on to as, as saying we are we are we are being covered under this permit and then you have to comply with that permit. Yeah. The most important part of that is is a stormwater pollution prevention plan, which is a very meticulous document that says, you know, how is your construction going to be managed? Where is your entrance going to be? Where are your settlement mm -hmm. basins going to be? How are you going to maintain it? You're going to keep records. Mm -hmm. So all, all of that is going to be in place. And Mr. Ritter, I appreciate you, you explaining that um, certainly more powerfully than I, in more detail than I can possibly uh, uh, do. But I just wanted to be Thank clear, you, <clears throat> be, uh, because the, the concerns, I, I think, you know, um, I understand the concerns. I think, you know, I appreciate the comments, but I didn't want you to misunder, misapprehend our, you know, our role here as it relates to, you know, those concerns. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, and a reminder, too, you, this is this is sort of... A, a, a fulcrum point in, in our analysis, the, the 40B process only requires, you're approving a preliminary plan. That's right. So, so it's understood that the documentation is going to be less detailed, less informed than, than the final plans that the building inspector will review, that the conservation will review, that Board of Health. The, the plans that conservation reviews and the plans that Board of Health reviews, those are issued for construction drawings. 
So, so, so there can't be anything missing. Those are not preliminary, but those are final approvals. So all of the documentation needs to be there. And in, in our comment letter, we're gonna rely on <clears throat> and, and identify areas where we see shortcomings in the submittals here. We're gonna specifically call those out and identify that they need to be addressed during the conservation commission process or before a building permit is issued. Mm. So, so to the extent that we see something in these documents, we'll do our best to notify the board that, that they exist so that you know they just don't get lost track of. And then you know there's plenty of opportunity to address them both during those those follow up processes. Wonderful, thank you. I <coughs> um, I do see um, uh, Jane Siaka on line here. Uh, we will recognize you. Please just state your name and address for the record and welcome. Uh, hi, actually, it's Tom Siaka. Uh, my wife and I sh sh share a, a computer. Uh, I live on Rock Lane. Wow. I'm uh, I'm uh, a member of uh, I'm I'm Wayland's representative to the River Stewardship Council. I am a member of the Energy and Climate C Committee. I've been actively involved in protecting Wayland's environment for over fifty years. Um, Want to make the general comment that um, I I don't look at this area as um, as particularly environmentally sensitive. I mean, all of Wayland's environmentally sensitive and environmentally valuable, but uh, I don't see any unusual issues here. And I'm perfectly confident that the CONCOM can uh, adequately condition the project to uh, protect the local environment. And from an energy standpoint, uh, the plans that I, I've seen indicate um, a very high level of, of uh, energy responsibility. Um, so I, I think this is a good project in a good place, and I would encourage you to move forward at all deliberate speed. You can ask me to play a rate. So, I'm sorry, I heard. Uh, no, 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 sorry, that, that was um, Siri wanted to be heard, <laughs> but we're not recognizing her tonight. So uh, please, Mr. Siaga. <laughs> so, uh, in brief, um, I think this project merits approval, and I encourage you to do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Siaga. Um, further public comment. Um, I believe you had it first. Uh, just your name and address. Uh, Anne Brensley, uh, Barney Hill Road. Um, okay. First, I just wanted to thank um, the community members who've been talking so much about the sidewalk, just because with affordable projects, there aren't so many people in these types of situations that care enough about that fact of the occupants, the future occupants. So talking about the sidewalk is really talking about concerns or things that the future um, residents want. <laughs> That's inviting to me. Um, but just wanted to give a really quick perspective. I do real estate development. I've done 40 new projects. Um, what we're experiencing right now, in my opinion, is a very positive view of 40 B uh, project because the size is pretty reasonable. A lot of times real estate developers will make the projects much larger um, in order to take advantage of market rate projects that are uh, mixed in with affordable this is pure affordability which i think is really wonderful um from the aspect of the school impacts because we're talking about an older community the impact on the wayland schools themselves are going to be very minimum which is a huge value because again some of these affordable projects that may be presented in the future if this were not to go through for some reason um might be a lot more strenuous on our school systems um, from a funding standpoint, sometimes real estate developers will do a 40 d project and they will carry it out for a very long period of time, taking advantage of extensions just because they don't have the funding in place. POA, if you do any research, they are very um, comfortable in actually financing and moving these projects forward. Um, and then most importantly, I think in my mind mm -hmm. is that this is being backed by a church. Um, maybe that's a personal side, but there are some projects, especially projects I've been part of where a developer will come to a town, 
pushing 40 B and there won't necessarily be this uh, very positive group behind it. I think um, just to finish my thoughts, um, Reverend O'Leary said it wonderfully when he said housing is a fundamental human right and this will be one more way Good, Good Shepherd Parish will continue bringing God's light into the world. So just please keep in mind, I pass this to the community members, I pass this uh, to the board, of course, um, that this project is not only uh, one specific project, but it could be um, the repla a replacement of this project could look very different. So this to me is a wonderful project. It has God's light and I highly support it and would love to see it move forward. Thank you. Yes. And I believe we had a comment in the back row. Gloria Valari, Three Weatherford Road, Thank you. and basically just took point by point. Novel, I have nothing novel to say. <laughs> um, except to say that uh, this is this is such an underserved demographic in this town, you know, that the age and the population that's addressing. And I, I do hope that we can resolve the issues uh, that we've spoken about today in order to push this forward as quickly as possible. Um, because this is a, a wonderful opportunity for the town of Wayland, I think, and for our community. Thank you. Uh, additional comments? Yes, in the back row. Uh, thank you, Chris Reynolds, uh, 139 Woodbridge Road. I just want to uh, underscore what the previous speaker said, and I would add that I think the applicant's been really responsive, particularly with setbacks. Uh, I am concerned that if this doesn't go through, uh, we should not assume, as Ms. Bensley asked us to know, she's right, uh, a subsequent applicant may not be uh, as uh, diplomatic or this one. I think we should pass this to measure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, Gary Spock, Jeffrey Road. Welcome. I have basically a couple questions. Has this board of the town submitted a request to the state for eligibility? And if not, when do you plan to do so? And do you need to finish all of these in each of the next year? Sorry. In order, to, in order to accomplish the, the application? Yeah, and, 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 and I'll certainly defer to others, but um, the project eligibility letter is, is a prerequisite before it comes in the applications even submitted to the zoning board. Um, so that's already been uh, accomplished. Um, by the applicant, and the applicants surely can speak to that process a little bit more than I can. Um, so, you know, um, and, I, and I guess maybe, um, what was the second part of the question? Oh, I was wondering if if, the, if you have actually, or the applicant has actually put in a memo to the state to get whatever they need to do before the application. Having done that, what is going to be your time frame for getting this project uh, approved, at least to the point where the state is uh, you met the 10% goal. <laughs> well, the process is the process is the process and we gotta go through the process here. Um, we've certainly had a number of hearings on this to date. Um, and I think, you know, probably after public comment here, you know, if we have time, I'd like to get into some of the waivers and start discussing the waivers um, <clears throat> and, and start getting to the meat of, you know, some of the, the, uh, the items that are being requested, you know, as deviations from the, uh, the zoning laws here. But, well, are um, we up against a 30 day competitive process? Well, we only have the application before us that is that is in front of us. Um, uh, St. Anne's, you know, a project which we're here to hear on. We do not have another um, application before us. Um, so it's not. But the town does. Um, no, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think it's appropriate for discussion here as far as, I mean, we're the ZBA, we're the Zoning Board of Appeals. I understand. We have an application before us and our purview is to hear applications. We are hearing this application um, and trying to move it through to its uh, end conclusion one way or another um, in an efficient manner as we try to do with all cases. And that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Mr. Easy. Rebecca Stinney, 14 with the road. So we just sort of morphed into some general comments. So a lot of people can't attend ZBA hearings as much as you might love them to. Um, so with a petition that's been online for the last three days, we have almost 300 signatures. People who have read it, they approve it, they want to see this project move forward. They are everybody from affordable housing advocates who have been working for projects like projects like this for a long time. 
There are people who want to see something happen at that location because it just works with the massing. It seems to fit. It's not overly huge. Again, another like a private developer, I'm not going to it would go really big. So it's very respectful, that project that's there. And that's why a lot of people like it. And then there's also people who are watching the clock and there is just the risk to our community. But you guys can only look at this. And I purposely ask anybody who's watching that clock, step back, look at this project. Do you support this project? And they're like, yeah, I do. You know, it's not just that I have somebody else or somebody else is chasing us. Is this inherently a good project? And everyone's like, yeah, it's a good size. It's a nonprofit. It's 30 to 60 percent area median income. It does all the things that we want to do. It doesn't affect the schools, gets a little bit more tax revenues. It just does everything that we want it to do as a community. So given they have been so responsive and design fits, a lot of people sign that petition. So I'll print out all the names and we specifically ask people to put their addresses um, just so you can get a sense that it is all the way across Wayland. So at the next hearing, we'll let it run for a week and then we'll put it out for you and we'll give you a record of that. Yeah, I saw that come from yeah. Alberta. Yeah. I did have a chance to go on and, and, yeah. and peruse, not the full list. It, yeah. was, yeah. it was quite lengthy. Yeah. And I'll also just state for the record, um, you know, we have been receiving supplemental materials that other people have been submitting mm -hmm. letters in support. Yeah. Um, I have not tallied the number of letters of support. Um, it would take <clears throat> some time to to tally that number. So um, and perhaps I'll try to do so for just for the record's sake um, at, at our next uh, hearing. Um, on this matter, but uh, any further comments? Yes, sir. John Rutledge, Wendy Helene. Hey. Welcome. Uh, we back by to the project. Now much comment has been said, this is a great project. Yes, there's a large piece of land that the Catholic Church owns. And any Wayland president <laughs> should be aware there's a huge parking lot to the south of the church. No trees, just bare space. No adjacent single family homes or anything. There's no reason why this excellent project couldn't be located on the south side of the church and solve all these problems and save a very nice wooded area uh, and, and also not have a building fronting right on 27, 20, 15 feet away from the street. So that should be a consideration of everybody in town and the Zoning Board of Appeals to nudge the Catholic Church to consider the alternate location within your own property. That would solve a lot of problems and not got a neighborhood of four residents, single family residents of Whitney Hill Lane. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Um, and, I, and I know there has been some discussion around this uh, at, at prior hearings. Um, and I'm not sure uh, we need to revisit this in any great length, but I, I, I think part of that discussion has centered around if, if you take that land, you still need to clear the land that we're talking about because of parking and other to replace that parking. And so I think it's not necessarily that you're preserving woods um, if you are putting that project on the other side. So I think there's there's been more to the story here. And I refer you back to um, to prior um, hearings that we had, a, uh, I think, a greater <coughs> discussion around that. Yeah, I, would, I think we had a pretty robust discussion on yeah. the various mm -hmm. options to switch the the a parking configuration with where the building mass would go. Um, and I, I think it was pretty clear that, that you wind up with the same amount of coverage on the lot, whether it's parking or building. It's just a question of whether the parking lot, clearing all the woods on the south side to construct the parking lot was ultimately more beneficial than, than locating the building on the other side. And um, it, it's not as though the choice is to just move the building to the parking lot and leave the woods. Like you you wind up having to clear an area the same size as the parking lot, you know, in the wooded area. And, and, and I think the other point to be said is it's not an option regardless because the archdiocese, the owner of the property, so they're not willing to do that. So even putting those complexities aside, it's a moot point and not before the board. It's not something that the board could compel. This is a, a property owner that has refused to uh, make that part of the property access for that purpose. So in large part, I understand what you're saying, um, but it's not before the board and it's not something the board could condition. It's not, that property is not part of that application. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Other comments? Okay, wonderful. Um, well, at this time, uh, does it make sense to actually jump into some of the waivers and, and start discussing them? 
Okay, wonderful. Uh, Ms. Quedwell, um, this being the first 40B that I've shared through here, um, how best and most efficiently do you think that we move through waivers? Yeah, we could just go, you know, go right through them. Okay. Um, we have the applicant uh, present the waivers and, okay, wonderful. Yeah. Ensuing conversation and questions as, as needed. Exactly, yes. Perfect. So, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Robert Brennan, uh, Attorney Small, I could bond representing Planning Office for Welcome. Affairs. Um, I, I think just broadly, you know, uh, before we get into, you know, any specific waivers, um, you know, broadly characterize these as, as administrative uh, and, and substantive. Um, the administrative are uh, to reconcile, you know, inconsistencies, for instance, where it says no building permit, you know, shall be issued for projects except in, you know, strict compliance with the zoning bylaws. Obviously, uh, you know, inherent to this process is uh, looking for building permits that will not uh, follow a strict letter uh, because of the, the waivers requested. So, you know, we do have them, you know, kind of characterized uh, or broken down between uh, administrative uh, and substantive. Um, with regard to the substantive waivers, um, standard under 40B is, um, you know, those provisions of the, you know, local bylaws, both, you know, zoning, uh, Board of Health, um, uh, and any other local, you know, bylaws that would uh, individually or cumulatively, and it, it typically is, you know, cumulatively render the project un uneconomic. So um, effectively, the substantive are uh, waivers that are, um, that are requested to wrap around the project plans as you've seen them. So as the, the plans have been presented, uh, whether it's regards to, to setbacks or height, um, <clears throat> et cetera, um, the project designed as to the, be the project that is uh, that we're able to move forward with, and, and uh, the requests for waivers are you know, those provisions that would prohibit us uh, from you know moving forward with the project as designed, being designed to um, you know the uh, the minimum standards of what would be you know economic in this project. So happy you know with um, uh, I guess we don't have you know Steve or, or Jay still on, but we'd be happy to to move them through answer any specific questions you know, with regard to individual waivers as requested, but just wanted to kind of set the, you know, set the stage in terms of what, you know, what we're going to be looking at, some, you know, procedural, <clears throat> some, you know, more substantive. One change uh, in the list of waivers since we filed it with the application, or two changes, um, you know, one, when we get into lot coverage, we had had, uh, you know, an indication of lot coverage being less than 20 uh, we've amended uh, 20 percent we've amended that uh to show the actual lot coverage you know at five percent and then secondly when this was initially uh filed uh we had requested in the list of waivers a, a blanket waiver uh of uh, local board of health um uh you know uh, provisions we have in our appearance before the board of health we specifically enumerated uh, those requests, uh, requested waivers. Um, the Board of Health considered those uh, and voted to endorse you know, our request with regard to that list of waivers. So rather than just requesting it blanketly, uh, we identified and requested specific uh, waiver provisions for the Board of Health. Do, do we have that from the Board of Health? Yes. Has that been part of the submissions here? Do we have uh, an endorsement of your specific yeah. waivers? I do not know if they've, I, I don't know if they've um, sent that over to you yet. Um, okay. I followed up with Julia today, and um, so I'm not sure if that, I haven't heard yet if it got back out to you, but they did vote. Um, and when was their, when was their meeting? Uh, June, 12th. June 12th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the minutes are not yet up online, but, um, but they did vote. They Maybe they're suffering from the same lack of administrative support. <laughs> it's the summer, um, so so and they voted to endorse um, all of all of the requested waivers, uh, and requested that we see, uh, that we do three additional test picks and one additional perk test. Okay, well, I think those perhaps will be best addressed when we have the comments from uh, the board of health. That's right. Uh, awesome. <laughs> so perhaps we can. <clears throat> Those aside, which yes. I think are probably in an omnibus um, a waiver 
as you've referenced here, but as we go through them, perhaps you could walk us through these and you know, maybe suggest, in your opinion, whether they're more administrative or substantive and call our attention to what you think is important, and, and we will try to drill you as, as we can. Um, well, I can perhaps move. No, please. Give you yeah, a little bonus to yes. the, uh, the screen as we're going through here. <laughs> Again, some of these um, I think perhaps would benefit from. Uh, Rob, you've still got Jay and David. Oh, we just did. All right, good. We still have Jay and, and, and David. Uh, so we do have our, our support. So, um, again, starting off, uh, this was the exact example uh, that I mentioned, you know, an administrative waiver. Uh, with regard to enforcement, um, providing no building permit may be issued, uh, except that that would be in violation of the zoning bylaw. Uh, again, to the extent that you're requesting waivers, um, in the absence of those waivers, uh, would be in violation of the zoning bylaw. So this is exactly that example of an administrative waiver, just for consistency uh, of the uh, you know, consistency with the issue of the building okay. permit. So uh, I got that. Any questions, concerns from the board on discussion around that? No, no. no. thank you. Good. Let's move on. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I may. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps um, it might make more sense to... Um, to See, this is have, why we have you here. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if it might be quicker and make more sense to have myself and, um, and Sean run through these with you and, and give us, give you our comments, which the board can then take in and discuss. And the applicant can also take that in rather than um, having the applicant go through and explain, and then us explain our comments. And I mean, it, it might just be a little bit easier and quicker. Well, I, I, I would like easier and quicker. Okay. Uh, so, so, so with regard to the, this. So what does that look like? Is that happening tonight right now? Or are you yep. suggesting you, you, wonderful? Yep. So I'm gonna run, to I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna run right through them, um, Your Honor. I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you can call me your honor, that is absolutely fine. <laughs> no, it's, it's I a, think your honor is appropriate. It's a habit. I'm want, sorry. You want sorry. the pay grade. You want the pay grade. Um, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and the robe. I need the robe. I am <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, You've got a spare so, robe. Yeah. Mr. So the, 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 the well, first one. Hold on, hold on, hold on for one second, Mr. Reardon. So, so, so just let you know, I, I provided Amy my comments on what? all the all the the waiver requests. So she she has my my comments. So all right. she speaks for the two of us. She she speaks for you. Yes, you are in yeah. the driver's seat, Ms. Queswell. Okay. Uh, lead us. So so the first one, I, I I do agree with counsel that it's you know it's a standard it's a standard waiver. We can consider that waiver. Um, the next waiver has to do with signs and exterior lighting. Um, um, Amy, would you mind if uh, if they get on the whiteboard again or on the screen? No, I don't mind. We can see them as I you're going. I don't mind. I just don't have them. On, I can't screen share them, but somebody else could. Yeah. But, okay. but if you Thanks. can just Thanks. talk yeah. along with the screen sharing, that would sure. be great. So this next one uh, is the one before that. Uh, nope, the one, the page before that, uh, right Seven. here, signs and exterior lighting. Um, unfortunately, at the time that Sean and I looked at these waivers, um, there's no signage or lighting plans provided. So um, I know that we talked about a lighting plan earlier. So um, we can admit, we can, um, we can reevaluate this waiver once we get that. So I would just put this one on hold right now. Um, and the next one is temporary signs, which there's, there's no reason that this waiver is, this waiver is not necessary. So I would recommend that the board deny the waiver. So any waiver that is not necessary is denied. Um, so their concern is about for the developer or the general contractor to be able to put up DEP signs, OSHA signs, things like that. They're all exempt anyway. So um, there's no, there's no need for this waiver. Um, with regard to the next waiver, which is earth removal or earth movement, um, Sean took a look at that. He has no objection to this waiver. Um, it's necessary and it, it, it can be granted to allow the project to move forward. Um, okay. Off street parking. So this is a little bit, um, so this is a little bit dif 
uh, confusing that we need we need some more information on this one because we're not really sure we don't have the lighting plan or or we don't we didn't have it when we or we don't have it right now but we don't have the lighting plan so we're not really sure what the limits are for the spaces um and also if they're going to put the church and the rectory on the leased premises on the actual project site we then have some parking issues so we need to work through those things before we consider this this waiver um with regard to the uh, next ones which are the design review plan design review board and site plan approval they're asking for waivers from both of those which is very common um this board has granted waivers on other 40bs for this and um this is a very common waiver that i would i would recommend granting um, the height regulations, um, they, they will need the height, um, which is more um, in detail in a couple pages further. They are looking for 45 feet and three stories where the regulations are two and a half feet and 30, two and a half stories and 35 feet. So that waiver is necessary. I would recommend granting that waiver. Um, and again, with setbacks, we'll get into that in more detail. Um, they don't need all setbacks to be waived. They only need some setbacks to be waived. Um, with regard to yards, um, again, that is also uh, driven by the setbacks, which we're going to get to next. And so we have next is the table of dimensional requirements, which um, if you look at the required and the proposed columns, they do not need all of the all of these waivers. So we will fashion your response to this waiver request accordingly. So for example, minimum lot area, they meet that. They don't need that waived. Minimum frontage, they meet that. They don't need that waived. Um, minimum front yard setback, it, the required is 30 and they're looking for 25. So that is a waiver. Um, the front yard from the right of way um, is, the required is 55, they're looking for 50. So again, they would need that. Minimum side yard is 25. They, they're proposing 75. They don't need that. Um, rear yard is required is 30. They're um, providing 650. So they don't need that. Um, and then again, height, they do need a height waiver. Um, maximum lot coverage they have, um, that's 5%. They do not need it because 20 is the maximum. Um, so that's, that's with regard to the dimensional. That's usually the biggest waiver the most important waivers uh, in my in my experience um the next one is the table of permitted uses um permitted uh principal uses again um they need this waiver uh because multifamily is not necessarily allowed here uh particularly 60 units but um again we need to clarify the the ground lease area of this um just to just to be certain, because this waiver is asking for you to allow the rectory and the church to be within this. And I'm not, again, I'm not certain that the rectory and the church are part of a 40B or should be part of a 40B proposal. Um, and then again, um, prohibited uses, this is an administrative um, waiver because prohibited uses are whatever, you're, you're already waiving what is not allowed. So it's, it, this is just a perfunctory waiver. Um, accessory uses in, in this, um, in this waiver, um, Sean did note that, um, there's a generator location, uh, not shown on the plans. So we would, we would need a little bit more detail on this, or we would condition it that, this can be waived only to the extent necessary to build the project. And then when the final plans come in prior to the building permit um, being issued, we would have a better idea as to what that is. Um, if the applicant can get us information on that before we issue a decision, that's great. But if not, that is something we can condition without a problem. Um, again, permitted uses in, a, in the single residence district um, that again needs to be waived. The use needs to be waived. Um, the inclusion of affordable housing. Um, so this one's always a question whether does this need to be waived or not? 
um, because they're giving us far, they're far exceeding the required affordable housing. Um, but I do think this has to be, this has to be a waiver because we have to document that they're not, um, they're not going, they're not giving us affordable housing pursuant to the zoning bylaw. They're giving it to us pursuant to chapter 40 B, the state law. So, um, that is a waiver that I would, I would, I would suggest you grant. And it's, again, I think it's perfunctory. Um, with stormwater and land disturbance, this is now we're getting into a um, the general bylaws. We're out of the zoning bylaw. Um, this is a standard um, waiver that is most 40Bs do ask for. Mm -hmm. Again, um, don't forget that the Conservation Commission will be looking at stormwater with regard to the Wetland Protection Act. So it's not as if stormwater is not looked at. Furthermore, Sean has also done peer review on, on the stormwater. Um, the, um, the next one is the wetlands and water resource protection, um, their rules and regulations. Again, this is a very standard waiver. It's been waived for almost, uh, as far as I know, it's been waived for every other 40B. Um, and this is, you know, again, standard. However, I do want to remind everyone that does not mean that the Conservation Commission is not going to look at this. The Conservation Commission still has to issue an order of conditions under the Wetland Protection Act. So they will be looking at all of the resource areas, mm -hmm. streams, everything that that um, that one of the members of the public brought up earlier. So those will be re reviewed. Um, the Board of Health regulations are next. And those, um, the first one has been um, eliminated by the applicant. The next one is the um, septic design requirements. This is there's no um, there's no objection to this waiver from um, from Sean. Um, again, uh, the soil absorption system, the two waivers. Sean has no objections to those. Again, the Board of Health has or has or will weigh in on this. Um, it's my understanding they're going to get you some comments, so you'll have those for the record. Um, and so all of the Board of Health um, waivers, Sean has no um, objection to. Mm -hmm. With regard to the offset distances, um, the second to last um, waiver, Sean's not sure that um, that it's even applicable. So we would have to look at that and um, look at and see what the Board of Health recommends. And again, the hydrogeological evaluation, um, Sean doesn't have any objection to this. It, it has to comply with the state regulations in any event. So, um, and, and, and that's it for the waivers. But, you know, just a reminder, um, the Board of Health under Title V will be reviewing this project and the Conservation Commission under the Wetland Protection Act will also be reviewing this project. Both reviews will be will come after your decision. Um, if there's anything where the Board of Health or the Conservation Commission requires a radical change to the project, it will come back to you. So, um, so th there's really no, um, there's no requirement that they go to Board of Health or Conservation first. Um, and I think the reason for that is because if there is a radical change, um, they will have to come back to you in any event. So those are all the waivers, Mr. Chairman. I think I have whiplash, but um, that was very, very <laughs> I told you I would go quick. <laughs> I, uh, you, Thank you. you. Did not you did not disappoint me. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you. Um, well, with that, I think that gave us a, a lot of informative information. Um, I'm certainly satisfied with that conversation. Do you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns uh, from the board? Ms. Puesto, Doug Levine, can I ask you a quick question? I was thinking about this earlier, and I'm glad that you answered it, but I just wanted to get a little bit more information. When you say, quote, a radical change, can you give up, paint that a little bit more of a picture for mm -hmm. me? Like what kind of substantive sure. change you can talk so about? If, um, so for example, uh, these are real life changes that I've seen. Um, the building has to be moved because the Conservation Commission um, basically um, did not agree with the wetland delineation. And the once they explained themselves, the applicant agreed. The wetland line changed, the stormwater had to change, the building had to move. Um, parking, um, sometimes parking will have to move 
with regard to both um, wetlands and also um, some, you know, stormwater or, you know, leaching field, the Board of Health leaching field, something like that. Um, you know, if, if there's a, if there's a design change, I guess I would say, if, um, you know, if they're going to eliminate, you know, three parking spots and they already have in excess of what's necessary, then that wouldn't be a, you know, a substantial change that would come back to you before, you know, a building permit is, um, is applied for. And again, as Sean had mentioned earlier, um, you're looking at preliminary plans. And so final plans based on your waivers and your and Board of Health and Conservation will be submitted to the Board of Health, I mean, to, to the building department prior to a um, building permit being issued. We will um, put in a condition that Sean gets to review the final plans for consistency with what was presented to the zoning board. So essentially, you know, your peer reviewer has another crack at the plan at the final plans when they come in. Thank you. <clears throat> Further comments, questions from the board? No, I, I thought that was a great review. You too. I mean, I think if you if you break out the substantive waivers that we're actually asked to to really consider, um, <clears throat> I, I think that that's really the height. And that's really the only one, you know. And I think I I think I think um, Amy's recommendation to remove waivers that are are redundant or not needed yep. is probably a, is a great idea. Yes. I think it just simplifies the process. Yep, agreed. That's where. <laughs> Yep, that fits with my uh, my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I did see uh, the building commissioner's hand up a couple seconds ago. I, I just want to make one comment about the removal of the waiver for uh, the church and the rectory being included in that multi-family um, sort of zone. Usually, most churches are a um, shelter, you know, in case of emergency or something like that. Uh, and all the cities and towns that I've worked in that has they've done that if needed, and that's probably why they asked for that. Um, it's a service that the church usually provides for um, <laughs> single parent, uh, how am I going to put this, um, people in need of housing other than what they're providing right now. You know, if they didn't have this project is what I'm saying. And, and I just want to, to clarify, uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, um, <laughs> that it, it, in the in the application, the product description, the, the, the church is outside of you know, both the, the leased area and, you know, the, the description of the, of the project. It's the rectory that we're talking about. And, 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 and not, you know, not looking uh, to, you know, correct, not looking to, to address anything. But even the rectory, you know, the rectory's inside, you know, of the leased area, uh, but not, you know, not part of, uh, of the project uh, either. So, so, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, you know, Please. to council, did, did they ever consider your... Um, your idea of an easement, I'm wondering, was that considered a, was it ever considered to do an easement with the, for the access rather than putting the rectory in the leased area? So, uh, uh, these, these negotiations were going on. I, I, the, <coughs> our council, small and one, was not representing uh, the applicant in their dealings, you know, with the, uh, in the negotiations with the church. This is done as an arm's length. Uh, you know, as an honest like negotiation transaction. So I can't, I can't speak to that. I recognize that, you know, it could have been done, you know, one way or the other. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that there were reasons that it was, was done and is done, you know, as shown with the least area being defined. And then there'll be, you know, a, a Greek separate agreements for the, for the use of that. So again, I, I can't speak to the alternative, okay. but I know that as, you know, as it's drawn, as the least area is established, you know, that there is, our client, you know, uh, who is at, is confident that that is uh, that is workable, um, you know, with the with the rectory being within the leased area, but not being part of the project and and the use of that being exclusive to the church. Okay. So uh, there was there there was a there was also a question about parking for the rectory. Um, there are three parking areas on the site. Um, uh, it, there are three parking areas in the lease area. Um, 
One is the L shape around the building that that serves that serves the housing. Uh, the second is all the way to the east. Um, it's a parking lot with. I don't remember the count off the top of my head, but but it's all the way to the east. Uh, that also serves the housing. Uh, the third is is the closest to the rectory. That is, there is currently a parking lot uh, directly behind the rectory. That parking lot needs to be demolished because there's septic going underneath. Um, we're going to rebuild that parking lot. It shifts over a few feet, um, but we are essentially rebuilding a parking lot with uh, just about the same number of spaces um, still to serve the rectory and church. It is within the lease area, uh, but, but it will be serving the church and the rectory as it currently does. Thank you. Further comments, questions? All right. Fantastic. Um, I'm not sure if there's uh, other business to discuss here or, or issues that we need to cover before we get to um, some of the other uh, administrative pieces, which are more date and time for site visit. Um, talking about when we're going to get comments, clarifications to the waivers discussions that we've had today, including you know when we're going to get, um, I guess, the, the lighting um, piece and then discussion on, on further hearings we're going to need for this. But are there other matters other than those that I've just kind of outlined um, that we want to cover? Mr. Grumbach. Yeah, I think along with the lighting, it sounds like the issue of whether the rectory is within the leased area is the most pressing question because this can go a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, so I think I kind of included that as, you know, I, I view that as kind of part of that common clarification to the waiver discussion here because that does come yeah. up in that. Okay, so, um, thank uh, you. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think getting some clarity on when... You know, and I guess maybe let's just tackle that right now. When do we think we're going to be able to, from the, the applicant's uh, standpoint, mm -hmm. get clarification in the comments and addressing the different waiver concerns that we've heard just outlined today? Um, I need to discuss with council offline. Because uh, uh, this might affect, you know, our, right. our, our schedule. Right, right, right. right, and, right. <clears throat> um, I... I would need to. I, yeah. I can't speak. So it, just just to to clarify, as, as I understood, and I was taking notes um, as, um, <coughs> as as council uh, was was going through, and and thank you again for doing that. Um, that was a lot more uh, efficient getting the uh, the comments. Uh, now you're going to have to watch the way cam and watch it back because she talked too fast. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 tried, I tried my best, but I understood that where additional information was needed um, was, you know, with regard, you know, to the off street parking. Um, uh, it was the primary one that I, that I had listed. Um, there were three or four of them in there. Yeah. The uh, information as to the generator mm -hmm. uh, with regard to accessory uses. Um, uh you know, and, and, and information with regard to uses with regard to the ground lease um, and the the status of the of the rectory uh, and church. So um, again, I, I I don't know if we I felt like we we've, we've discussed that you know the the fact that the the rectory you know is within the leased area uh, and again that leased area you know being what was you know made available uh, by the church and for reasons that include you know the um, you know subsurface you know wastewater. Uh, system and um, needs to, to have the control of that to the extent that it's located proximate, uh, you know, to the rectory. So I don't know if, if there are, you know, additional, like more specific <clears throat> questions that um, either council or, or the, the peer reviewer may have. I, I I would like a little bit more discussion about the generator because um, yep. I, I don't <clears throat> recall seeing it or recall having discussed it. And that will be something that makes noise, creates emissions, so you know, it, it, it's typically a point of discussion during this type of format. Hello? So that that that, oh, that was I the first thing I this. the first time I heard of I'm a generator. Sorry, I'm sitting in the middle of a zoning board meeting right now. Hey, Aida, do you mind uh, muting yourself? I love hearing your conversation. Can but, uh, can we can we mute Aida? Yeah. 
There we go. Um, Mr. Chairman, we also need to know um, if we also need to know what the property signage is going to look like because um, if they're if they're going to need a waiver from signage for the actual, you know, the property signage is you know what the name of the name of the complex is signage not 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 speed limit signage things like that but we need sure. to know if they're going to need waivers for from that from the yeah. signage requirements Great. right specific specific not not general waivers um yes right. um 100 um but do do we need to talk about the generators today um, it sounds like we might not have enough information. You might need to go back and get information. Yeah, I, I'll I'll need to get uh, information. Um, I don't, you know, I don't believe because obviously I'd like to accomplish as much as possible. <clears throat> so we have as few issues at the next hearing Absolutely. to discuss as yeah. possible. Mr. Chair, I don't think it needs to be discussed unless yeah. it's it's perceived as a problem. So, for example, if the generator finds its way on the Windy Hill side of the project, it's going to be a problem. If the generator finds its way on the other side of the project, it's probably not. So if if I get this right, uh, if if you're provided with the information, right, it's submitted to the board, you're provided with that in order to review as part of your peer review, you will raise issues and flag it for us. Or, or the board could simply condition <clears throat> if there's a generator, it's going at location B, whether you like it or not. So, I mean, ideally, the board doesn't get in the, put in the position of having to dictate where the generator goes. Right. The applicant would pick a, a conscientious location and show it on the plan and enough said. Right. I don't want to tell anybody where to stick it. Good. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Uh, good. Property signage, you got that down. Property <clears throat> signage, correct. Yep. Um, any other issues that we need to, and I, and yes, I see your hand. You don't have to uh, <laughs> You put Sorry. it down, Jim. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll get to you Thank in one you. second. Um, any other issues that we need to uh, highlight here, um, Mr. Reardon or Mr. Boswell, that you want to particularly highlight? Um, yeah, I, I just have a, I just have one um, administrative issue that we can discuss at the end. Um, it has to do with um, attendance at hearings. So, yes, excellent. I was um, hoping to discuss that as well, uh, Mr. Grumbach. You've been ever so patient. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this project has, I think, gone very smoothly to date, partly because the applicant has met with a lot of people from the town and a lot of different boards. It strikes me that one of the major issues that was fleshed out tonight is a legal issue involving whether the rectory is in within the leased area. Normally, that's something that the attorney for each side would talk about, but that's a problem with the open meeting law. So I'm uh, just asking town council if she could give us her experience in other cases as to a way to deal with this so the public will have input in terms of the open meeting law and we can move forward without wasting a lot of time and one side going off in tangents. So, um, so Mr. Grumbach, I, I think that what's going to happen is um, I'll have a conversation with counsel for the applicant um, who will either convince me that um, that having the rectory in the least area doesn't impact their tax credits and their financing with regard to the 40B. Um, and if not, they'll move the rectory outside of the least area. Okay, well, I, I, think it's, I don't think it's a... Um, this this is it's not a make it or break it honestly. Okay. That's it's very just, helpful. Um, I mean, I, yeah. I I think we just wanted to get a yeah. sense of it. Thank you. Yeah. No, Sean. Um, Sean and I just need to be comfortable that, and and I think I'm not sure about Sean, but I haven't seen a 40B where there's been a outside use as part of the in as part of the property of the 40B. So. Um, and particularly here where there's tax credits because it's 100% um, affordable and senior, um, we would want to make sure that nothing jeopardizes that. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that, that's actually very helpful description, so, Ms. Queswell, just to understand, you know, what the actual implications are. Yeah. Um, so just, just, to, just to clarify, so the concern is whether having the rectory within a leased area would impact our... Uh, tax credits and and the project uh, eligibility is that right? No, no, site no. control, yeah. I mean, essentially, it it all boils down to site control. I think um, so. That's what we need to be 
That's what we need to clarify. Yes. And the, the concern for me is to what geographic extent does the decision apply? Yeah. Right. So if our, if our decision applies to the rectory, we have to consider whether there are conditions on the rectory and what can happen in the rectory, right? Because and parking it's and, yeah. essentially, essentially part of the project. So if, if it's really to, to what geographic extent does the, does the ZBA's decision apply? Mm -hmm. That informs our conditions. And right now it's a little murky because we have a assemblage of two parcels, which we occupy a portion of both. So we can't confine it to just one of the parcels. And then we have a shared parking area, uh, independent structure that are all part of the lease parcel, which confuses things. So maybe we have to define a third area, which is the project area right. to which the, the ZBA's decision applies. <laughs> we just get a meets and bounds description of that. Yeah. Answer it, but I'll leave that up to you when you need it. But I, I guess I would just suggest that you know, to the extent that nothing is being proposed as to the rectory, um, there's no 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 construction, no alteration. Um, to the extent that it would be you know either conforming or or pre existing non conforming, um, I just question the need uh, whether the rectory is is within or without to address it substantively as part of the decision there's nothing substantively being being proposed and again to the extent that we maybe we could include you know um uh, a waiver you know that would identify anything that would be you know pre-existing and conforming well, if that's you, i mean right off the bat you have two primary uses on one on one parcel which you can't have so, right. so you know, right off the bat, you're, right off the bat, you're already missing a waiver. So we either have to figure out if you have to keep this rectory on the project site, we have to get the appropriate waivers in place, or you know, the rectory doesn't apply. Now, does the rectory possibly? And I don't want to get too much into the weeds, Mr. Chairman, but possibly the the rectory is subject to the Dover Amendment, and so. That means it really zoning doesn't apply. But then when you add a housing development with it, that a housing development that's not associated with the religious use, does it lose the Dover? Does that Dover protection go away? So it, it, it's just, it's a conversation we need to have. That's that. It, so well, sounds like an important one too. I, I don't want to bring up. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to start yeah. speculating. You know, guys. Yeah. So and and I, I apologize that I. I haven't done this yet um, because I, I guess whenever, whenever I looked at the plan, I just assumed the rectory and the, and the church were not part of it. The, you know, in fact, when I spoke with um, John Smolak, um, he, he mentioned to me that the rectory and the church are not part of the project. So I just, I just went with that. But then Sean pointed out that they're in one of the rectories in the least area. So that's where we have an issue. Yeah, please don't apologize. I think it was a good point to alert us to it. So thank you. Well, that Sean gets the credit for that. I don't. Thank you, Sean. Definitely have to like speak. Just, just that I think the dis I think there's um, in the project and the the distinction between the project and the leased area is is maybe not um, uh, was was maybe not entirely clear in everyone's mind. It's becoming more clear, I think. Yeah. Right, and, and it, it's definitely not a huge issue. I, I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to panic anybody. It's not a big deal. We we will so resolve. Let's this. leave it this way, Miss Quizzle. You're going to have conversations yep. with counsel for the applicant, and we'll hear more on this issue. I'm sure. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you. I think we've discussed that far enough today. <clears throat> Back to balloons and landscaping. <laughs> Sorry, we do not recognize you. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I do. Uh, I guess the the question is because you know we're going to need to discuss a uh, uh, you know the hearings you know schedule going forward, um, and the question being you know I think we have a tentative hold on the thirteenth, but we do we need and does it make sense to try to you know add one for next week, um, and you know. Uh, um, and if that's the case, if we're looking to add another hearing for next week, I think that's certainly possible if we discuss it, you know, tonight, um, you know, in, in the open meeting here and, and decide on that, but we'll have to pull out our calendars. Um, but the question really becomes, will there be enough time between now and next week 
it being uh what is this uh wednesday is this mm -hmm. a wednesday yeah. um <coughs> where am i <laughs> uh mr chair Thursday, friday um no mr hirsch you're gonna wait um and then we have the long weekend um you know the holiday weekend um so my my concern being i kind of need to hear from you guys when are you going to be able to get us some answers, right? You know, and get some clarifications here that are going to be substantive enough to get to our, you know, in the hands of our peer reviewer and council such that we might be able to hope to move, you know, the matter forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, would that be possible if we were looking at, like, say, the sixth? You know, I, I think yes. I, mean, I think particularly this the issue that we're talking about with regard to you know, mm -hmm. the, the rectory and, and the project area. I think we can, you know, I think we can have this resolved, you know, at tomorrow. Um, you know, the Thank issues you. with regard to generator, property signage, I, I, uh, I yeah, I don't see that as, as being yeah. heavy risk either. I know that, um, with regard to the mm -hmm. landscape plan, uh, it was looking for, you know, submission of the labeled, um, you know, colored version of the landscape plan, which I think is, uh, is, you well, know, it's adding a layer on the, uh, on the yeah. plans. Mm -hmm. So I, I, again, I think these are all. These are all items that I, I don't see any, I don't see that going beyond, you know, the end of this week. Um, what, what may take a little bit more time, um, I don't know if our landscape architect is still on, is a landscape plan that labels each individual plant. Mm -hmm. um, that, I, I uh, oh, she's back. Hi. Um, trees are easy, shrubs are a little more time. Um, so I don't know how much detail you want, Sean. If you want, trees every is all and perennial. Okay. Well, like, trees were good. Perfect. I'm there for you then, Sean. Thank you. So, so Mr. Chairman, um, I'm not sure you need a meeting next week. Um, I don't think that any of these um, any of these outstanding issues are um, are are big enough to um, have to have a meeting. I, I think on the 13th, we're going to have an answer. Everybody's they're gonna we're gonna have an answer to all these issues for you on the 13th. Uh, that won't change uh, significantly, won't change the project. Um, so I'm I'm not really sure um if you know I, I it might be a big in I I don't know. I, I'm assuming it could be a big inconvenience for your board to meet on the next week where it's a holiday Life week. Is an inconvenience, Ms. Uh, yeah, it is. Can you give it can you give us more of a lay of the land? For those of us who haven't been through the 40B process, what else remains to be done? And how does the written decision factor into this process and the voting on that decision? And I'll recognize you now, Ms. Thank you. <laughs> so, Thank what, you. so what I what I'm proposing is I'm proposing that I will <clears throat> um, present a written decision to you on the 13th. Um, okay. what I'm proposing is that the beginning of the meeting on the 13th, we go through the four or five outstanding um, condition, outstanding issues, one, two, three, four, uh, five. The five outstanding um, conditions, which I have are the lighting plan, which I'm not really sure that's outstanding because it has been submitted. We just haven't seen it. Um, the rectory slash leased area, the parking um, with regard to that, that's actually the same issue. So there's only four issues. Um, mm -hmm. The generator and signage for the property. Um, for the for the actual project, uh, so those are those are pretty minor. Um, we can have the applicant explain how they've resolved those. Um, I can present a um, a written uh, draft decision to the board. Um, I can present. I can actually um, try and get that decision to you ahead of time, yes. so you can actually take a look at it. Um, perhaps on the tenth, which is a Monday. Um, get you that draft decision and then we would meet on the 13th um, and then we would go over the draft decision. The draft decision um, has the first um, whole section is the procedural history and then we get into the findings and the findings are really what the board, I, what I need the board to um, to review and, and be comfortable with and, and, or, and or add to, delete, whatever. And then we have conditions and I would go through the conditions the way that I went through the waivers. I would talk a lot slower, but um, there's conditions that are standard conditions that 
This is it. They're standard conditions. They're in every single 40B. Then there are conditions that are project specific. And those are the conditions that we would focus on. Um, you know, this is the condition and this is why it's a condition kind of thing. Um, so I, I think that I think that having a meeting on the 13th um, is sufficient. If, um, you know, if the board wants to hold a meeting next week, uh, that that's fine with me too. But um, I just no, don't, I, didn't I, want to pressure anybody. No, I appreciate the non-pressuring. Um, uh, I, I just, I was concerned, you know, just to, I didn't know if we need an interim meeting um, just to facilitate further discussion or further issues that are going to be needed. But uh, I'm looking to uh, Mr. Peer Reviewer. Um, just to make sure that you're going to be able to get what you need and get us what we need. Yeah. So my, my plan is to get a, a letter outlining all my Great. comments and my recommended conditions to you guys by the end of next week so that okay. Amy has it to just cut and paste into her draft decision. Okay. And then we can uh, review that. And if you could commit to providing that to you by the, the 10th, uh, yes. as well, I think that would be extremely helpful for us. Mm -hmm. So that would give us ample opportunity um, to review come with questions, <laughs> concerns, issues that we need to further explore or not, um, and uh, be prepared um, you know, for the 13th hearing. Now, what I would say is what came up tonight was relative to a potential site visit. Um, you know, uh, and, and I know uh, there are board members um, that would, uh, would like that. Um, perhaps we could use either later this week or next week, you know, for that purpose, um, and to do, you know, to get on site and actually see, um, you know, and also I think that provides an extra opportunity, you know, uh, for the abutters. Um, I know there's been concerns relative to seeing stakes um, and, and other things I won't mention, um, but perhaps that, that allows uh, more process there and can satisfy some of those concerns for them. So, Perhaps we look at our schedules and what would be uh, possible or available for a, a site visit. Is that something that we could get dates on tonight and kind of establish? Uh, how about the third or the fifth? The third is a definite no. <laughs> the sixth sounds good to me. This is Jim uh, back. Yeah. So, so I prefer the fifth. Yeah, I, fifth? I, I would prefer the fifth. Um, I could do the fifth or the sixth. Okay. I, uh, what is the timing? Okay. Or, I mean, you know, we could do this potentially uh, the following week as well, right? Um, or if we if we uh, accept Ms. Queswell's, uh, our counselor's uh, suggestion that we just maintain the 13th as our next hearing date, there's a possibility we could do this on the 10th. And maybe that takes pressure off um, any number of people um, and I know Mr. Hirsch had, was looking to be heard earlier and, and maybe that now's the time, but I think it was relative to some maybe scheduling conflicts. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and perhaps would it be better part of Valor, um, understanding that if we're, if we're not meeting until the 13th, there's no reason why we couldn't necessarily do this on the 10th or the 11th per se. Yeah. Um, Does that make sense? And then we're out of the week of the 4th of July. Yes. That's uh, fine. Good idea. Well, I'm full of them, uh, yeah. Mr. Grumbler. Thank you. That's why we refer to you as your honor. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's only council that does. <laughs> so, so, um, so either would work. I personally would prefer the 11th, but I think they're they're. Others um, at the planning office who could who could uh, do the tenth. The eleventh would, uh, quite frankly, work much better for me as well. Mondays right, are extremely tough in my work schedule, my <laughs> other life. Um, <clears throat> the eleventh would be excellent for me. How about the rest of the board? Works. That, that's fine for me. I'm not. I'm out of the country. You're out of the country. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said. You'll take me with it. That's why I went. <laughs> <laughs> only it was that easy, right? Um, <laughs> that's why uh, I'm back on the. I'm back on the 13th. You're back on the 13th. I prefer not to do that on the 13th. Um, are you? Um, I, I leave on the morning of the 6th. You leave on the morning of the 6th. Yeah, so, so that's the why I can do the 5th. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Well, I mean, I think we're in a situation where we either have you or not yeah. have you. And Except, have somebody yeah, else. I mean, it's not, it's not, this is not considered an official meeting. Right. So it's not, it's not something that you're one, not going to have to one, can, one can't yeah. mullenize for this. That's right. Because it's not conducted here. That's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, I would, you know, schedule it around whatever is convenient. Okay. Uh, I, I would think that maybe not the week of the 4th of July is most convenient for everyone on the board. Yes. <clears throat> Correct. Wonderful. Yes. I'm getting off. That's right. good. Um, let's uh, schedule it for the, let's, I mean, I, I know some of the abutters might be interested in, would they love to work for you? Okay. I'm getting nods uh, all the way across there. So um, let's schedule for the uh, 11th. Um, you know, I'm not sure what you're looking at for time. Uh Cheating it towards the end of the day might be yep. a fantastic option yep. for that's those great. of us who have other lives and do other things during the day. Yes, that's great. Uh, you know, you you tell me uh, when uh, we defer. We defer to the board. Would this um, would <coughs> five o'clock be? Great. It gives us certainly enough light. It gives us. Yep. Okay. Five o'clock. Later would be better. Later would be better. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Is there a um, ZBA meeting that evening? I have one on my schedule. I have one on my schedule. Well, I probably have one on my schedule. I'm guessing as yeah. well. I don't know if there are any. I don't so know if there are any not, cases, but I think there is a. Schedule. It's our next regular meeting. Yeah. Would four yeah. o'clock work? Would four o'clock work? Four o'clock is then you can get home and have some supper. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of agree. I mean, uh, uh, I, I honestly think five o'clock. Um, I don't imagine this would be a long site visit. I'm, I'm not sure about anybody else, but I'm not sure I'm going to need that long personally. Yeah. So I would imagine if I got there at five, I'm probably I'm gone by five thirty. The town isn't that big. <laughs> We're probably the fine is five for me. I actually have a Wayland Housing Partnership meeting, but. Uh, I thought I'd skip it. I can make five work. Okay. Five o'clock it is. All right. Five o'clock on, uh, on, on, on the 11th. On the 11th. Um, wonderful for site visit. Um, so, so, Mr. Chairman, um, just to remind you, you and um, the, the board and, and particularly the public that this is not an open meeting. It's a site visit. Um, it can be, um, it can be posted. Um, it's probably a good idea just to post it as a site visit. Um, however, there can be no deliberation. Um, there can be no questions from, you know, from the public. Um, there can be no questions from, if there are, is a question from a board member, the question has to go to the applicant. The applicant answers and that's it. There's no discussion amongst yourselves because there that would be considered deliberation. So um, I agree with you. It's going to be very quick. Most site visits. Um, this will be an anti-social be... affair. It will um, not. So we'll all clear on that. Um, yep. All right. I will be rude to everyone. Um, and uh, okay, wonderful. I, I certainly can accomplish that. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's convene then for the site visit on the uh, uh, the eleventh at five p.m. I will request um, the building department to to post that. Um, and then I think the only other issue right now is, is continuing this hearing uh, until the 13th, um, and we need a time certain. Uh, I'm not sure how, I guess this is the only matter on for the 13th. This would be at 705 for the 13th. So we also, we need to discuss attendance too, before you continue it, before you continue this? Sure, lead us in that. Sure. So I have on um, May 25th, um, that's when this was opened, but it's my, I, I unfortunately was at another meeting um, in another, in another municipality, but it's my understanding that all the board did was vote to um, engage peer review and to um, hire Tetra Tech. Is that correct? At the very first hearing? We, we got a general overview um, from the applicant. But there were no questions by the board, correct? We didn't take public comment. Um, right. Did we ask questions at the board meeting? Yeah, I have in my notes that it was it was administrative. Yeah, okay. we, we selected the peer. The only action we took was the peer review vote, the vote, and we right. set meeting dates. Okay, so um, and then on five thirty, um, that meeting was continued. Um, I have that on the 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 
actual agenda notes that it was continued. So then I have testimony was taken on 6-1, 6 6-15, and tonight, which is 6-28. So on um, 6-15 and 6-28, I have all eight of you in attendance. Um, for 5-25, 5-30, for all of the meetings, I have um, the chairman and I have um, Tom White as attending all hearings, whether they were um, administrative or not. Um, and then I have... Um, I have Mr. Um, Mr. Fitzpatrick and um, Mr. Levine missing one meeting. Um, and so um, I missed one was, meeting as well. Uh, I, miss, you, I missed the 30th. You, you missed um, Mr. Hirsch. You missed um, you missed three meetings. So, um, no. so well, let me, okay. So, I don't think that's I'm going to move on to that. <laughs> so I have that um, Mr. Fitzpatrick and Mr. Levine missed June 8th. Can you, do you guys, um, can you guys confirm that with, for me? Can you tell us again, the dates of the meetings? Cause sure. I think the, the only one I missed was the 25th. So Mr. Grumbach, I have that you missed the, I, well, so let me, I, I have that you missed three also. So. But no, there, there's a so. very good chance I'm wrong. Very okay. good chance. I so, well, I have notes from the 30th of May. Okay. So I'm just going to go with Mr. Levine and Mr. Fitzpatrick first, if I may. Okay. Thank you. Um. So I have that they missed. Um. I'm that they missed June 8th. Is that correct? Or do you guys have notes that you were at June 8th? Doug Levine was there. I have that on my yeah, notes. Yeah, I have a lot of notes from June 8th, Amy. So okay, great. Mr. Um, Mr. Fitzpatrick, do you recall if you were there on the 8th? Uh, confirmed. That is the one that I missed. Okay, great. So, Mr. Fitzpatrick, if you could review the video for the 8th yep. and sign the Mullen form and file it with the town clerk um, before the 13th of July, that would be, that would be great. Okay, no so... So, Mr. Levine, I apologize. You have not missed any meetings. So, um, okay, so that's that you're you're getting moved. I um in case you guys want to I color code it. So you're gonna get moved from blue to red. Right. Um, red is good actually in this in this yeah, instance. Like, you're you're moving a lot slower on this conversation than on the waivers. Because <laughs> I have to be certain. So um okay, so I have for the 25th, I have um, oh, I'm sorry, um, Miss Get Miss Guinness. I have you missed mm -hmm. the 25th. Is that true? That's true. Okay, that's the only meeting I have you missing. So, if you wouldn't mind, I know that it was probably I know that it was administrative, but if you wouldn't mind filing a Mullen for that, um, it would be the best. It would be the the, the okay. safest bet. Um, okay, so so and and that's it for you. I have you missing no others. Yep. So, um, okay, so Mr. Hirsch. I I have that you were not at the 25th, the 30th, and the 1st. No, I was uh, I was only missing the 30th. Okay, there was no test. That was not even a... Um, okay, that that meeting doesn't even count because there it was a continuance. So no, you were the 30th, at... The, I, I have notes from the 30th hearing. But not now, for this... It was, it was other matters. Right, correct. Okay, thank you. Right, not this matter. It was so a regular. Do meeting. I need a Molinize for the thirtieth? No, there was no testimony taken. Great. Unless you have to Molinize for other hearings, but I'm not. I'm only discussing this one hearing. Um, and then so, um, Mr. Grumbach, I I also have you missing the same three meetings: the twenty fifth, the thirtieth, and the first. I was at the thirtieth, which didn't relate to this, and I have notes from the first. Okay, great. I was there. Do you recall the twenty fifth? 25th, I missed. Okay, so if you could also um, Mullenize for that, although again, I do I do believe that it was administrative only. There was no testimony taken, but if you could Mullenize for the 25th, that would be great. Happy to do and that. And then um, the last one is is um, Mr. Sarian. I have the same thing, uh, 525, 530, and 61 missing. Do you recall if you were at any of those that I'm that I missed? I missed the 25th. Just the 25th. Just the 25th. 
It's great. So if he could also, if you could also Mullenize for the 25th, that's great. So that, that helps. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, with that uh, taken care of, um, we're going to look for, um, we agree to continue this to the 13th yeah. at uh, 7.05. Yep. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. We'll take that by roll call uh, vote. Um, we need to make a motion for that, Amy, <clears throat> technically. Yes, a motion to continue. And the motion to continue has to, you have to continue to a time date Time, date, yeah. and place certain. But it has to be a motion. Okay, we can't. It okay. does. So, yes. I'll move that we continue this hearing uh, to uh, July 13th at 7.05. Right. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Oh, sorry, Hirsch, Mr. Hirsch, you're slow. Um, we'll take this by roll call vote. Mr. Hirsch? Aye. Mr. Grumbach? <clears throat> Aye. Ms. Janice? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Sarian? Aye. Mr. Levine, aye. Mr. White, aye. Myself, Joshua Warren, the chair, uh, aye. Um, that passes. We'll see you on the 13th at uh, 7.05. Uh, I'm not sure if the building commissioner has the paperwork that we need to sign. I do not. Okay. But I will. We'll get that circulated at first opportunity. Yes. Um, otherwise, uh, I will be seeing everybody at the, um, at the site visit as well. Um, on that Tuesday, the 11th at 5 p.m., I believe was the, um, the time. Is it, um, is it preferred parking behind the rectory for this? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. Stay um, safe. I will take, uh, I will entertain motions. <clears throat> Move to end the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hurst. Do we have a second? Right. Mr. Levine, thank you. I uh, will take that by roll call vote. Mr. Hurst? Aye. Mr. Grumbach? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Ms. Janice? Aye. Mr. Sarian? Aye. Mr. Levine? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Myself, the chair? Aye. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much, Town Council.